Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another day, another week, another episode, Tuesday edition of 30 NSG. On today's show, we have a couple of, uh, I was just going through Twitter, and I picked up a couple of other uh, news stories that we're going to talk about, or topics that we're going to talk about, I should say. Um, what we're going to talk about is the uh, the year of the launch of PlayStation 2 has reportedly paused a PlayStation uh, VR 2 production, so we're talking about that. We're going to talk about the... Uh, AI rise in games and SAG and AFTRA are fighting to make technical, ethical uh, decisions for, for gaming. We're going to talk about the Skydance New Media's Captain America and Black Panther game, its title. Uh, we're also going to talk about a uh, thing that just came across is the Harry Potter Live service will be a perfect litmus test to see uh, whether the games of service has a future outside of Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roadblox. Uh, and then also... Right before I went live, uh, there's a post that's on Twitter talking about how the PlayStation 5 Pro is supposedly going to be hitting, uh, doing 4K, 120 frames per second for Jedi Survivor. Uh, this comes from Respawn, but it also comes from um, uh, Colt Eastwood and Mag's uh, podcast, XNC podcast. Now, take it with a grain of salt or whatever. We're going to give you my opinion on what that is. We do this Monday through Thursday from nine, uh, from 10 o'clock in the morning to about noon Eastern. If you like what we do here, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to go above and beyond that, become a member as little as $5. So what's going on, chat? What's going on, house? Dustin, Eclipse. Uh, who else we got here? Kylo, Big Mo. Dropped a video last night called Concerning Email. You may find that interesting. Um, send it to my Discord house. I'll look at it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it live uh, today or this morning anyway. What's going on, Alien? Good morning. That's not fair. Harry Potter could sell like hotcakes no matter what. Well, the live service. I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking about that first, right? I'm gonna start talking about the Harry Potter one first. Um. So it says the upcoming Harry Potter live service game will be a uh, superb litmus test. Uh, this is opinion piece, okay? So opinion by Sam Naji. This is coming from uh, GameIndustry.biz. He says, The strong possibility that the next big Harry Potter game to come from Warner Brothers will be a game as a service. It's an enticing prospect, but not for reasons Warner Brothers expects. Now, a lot of people are freaking out, right? Because Warner Brothers said that they want, you know, all games to be games of service, right? But we know... For a fact off of that, that the Wonder Woman game is not a games of service game. And we know that the Hogwarts Legacy game, one of the best selling, if not the best selling, it was the best selling uh, game last year, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, was a single player game. Now, before that game came out, I said that they should do what Grand Theft Auto did, where they have a single player game and then they open up to an online. I don't know if they make a separate game as an online game or if they add it to the already established Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know, right? So Sony and Warner Brothers, Ubisoft, EA, and Square Enix are all doubling down on making the next games of live service experience, and video games analysts have said multiple times they cannot call, uh, or they cannot all succeed. Now, the latest Jim uh, Jim, Jim McQuishan, I can't say his, his things, Jim Sterling's channel, live services are being sent to die, summed up a present state of affairs when it comes to games of service quite nicely. I didn't see his video. I probably should see that video and see what he says. Now, a key difference with it is that, one, it will build, build around the biggest franchise on the planet, right? And with the inbuilt audience of children who are all aware of the franchise, no universe building is required. This is why I said it's a, it's a perfect thing, right? IPs that people love to become a live service game, hence why Marvel should have done well, hence why Suicide should do well, is because people like the DC Universe. People like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. People like Transformers. People like G.I. Joe. People like Star Wars, right? People like... Harry Potter. So Hogwarts Legacy sold over 22 million units and was one of the best-selling games, one of the best-selling games of 2023 and Warner Brothers, embracing the games of service model for future games. So to answer my own question, he says, it all comes down to recruiting revenue, constant stream and revenue from engaged player base. Now, the issue is that the best live service model can be described as tough. The fact is that growth in video game spending is slowing down to a single figure percentage points which means the pool to dip into for live service spending is beginning to dry up. Now, what is left in the category is spending uh, cannibalizing. Uh, simply put, the game it realizes in recruiting spending can only be successful upon a failure of other games Okay, that also rely on recruiting spending. 
to increase the pool, you either need new players or increase spending from existing player base. And I would argue either uh, is happening. Now, here's the thing. Why is Grand Theft Auto, right? Why is Grand Theft Auto so successful with the online aspect? One, you get in to the ground floor by buying the single player game when it first came out, right? Like you buy the game itself. Then they give you the online access afterwards. And then people do what they want with that. So they've already made the initial like initial price for that game. And then the online, they constantly, they already know their player base, right? The people that bought the game are going to be interested in the online. Potentially, right? That's the, that's the base in. So now let's think about the Hogwarts Legacy. I'm not saying that they're going to make Hogwarts Legacy, the one that's out now, into a live service game. But what I'm saying is it would make sense if they did. And I said this way before this article came out. I said it way before the game even came out. I said it for Starfield. And I said it for Hogwarts Legacy, right? Hogwarts Legacy makes 100% sense to make it a live service game add-on to what you've already played. Because if you have no interest in it, then you don't play it. You just play the single-player game. But if you do want to dive into it, it's there for you on top of what you've already paid for, right? So they already know their retention, right? They already have the clientele. They're like, oh, well, Harry Potter fans bought this game. They like Hogwarts Legacy, and let's give them more of Hogwarts Legacy, right? So their low retention numbers... For newly released games of service, Payday 3, our treatment of the philosophy, if we build it, they will come, is no longer suffice. Yeah, but Payday 3, first of all, what was the what was the player base of Payday 1 and 2? I doubt it's anywhere near any of the other games that were live service games. So anyway, a game where a Payday gamers are already invested in most of their money and time into, so why should they make up uh, make the jump? So for many jumping on the new live service game, which also low cumulative uh, player base, that's also established one which is all high, high cumulative uh, player base made no sense. So for new games and service titles to achieve uh, unrelinquished success, they need to offer something new and original that gamers feel a sac uh, sacrifice and lost time and investment from the old games and service titles. It's worth it. Now, this is a chicken and eggs conundrum. Okay? Gamers will most likely jump onto a new live service game if it gains traction, but to... To get traction, it needs gamers. As Sterling has pointed out, in the list of failed live service games is getting longer and longer and more and more titles fail to find long-term audiences. Okay. It says one of the factors that accounts for successful, originally compelling gameplay to boil it down to the basic components. Will a new games of service title be fun to play and to their de a determinant of publishers of being to forget that the new games, games of service traditional should be fun. Here's the same thing though. And you can take games of service as a MMO, right? MMOs back in the day was, you know, an MMO was here, and then all of a sudden another MMO came in. Now there are people like, well, I like this MMO. I'm going to go play this MMO. Then it started separating, right? Like Star Wars had galaxies, then they had World of Warcraft. People left Star Wars, go to World of Warcraft. It's like, what's the latest, greatest MMO? Now there's MMOs, there, there's hundreds of them. Hundreds of MMOs, right? Then there's like blurred lines of like survival games that are like light MMOs. Then there's like Destiny games that are not MMOs at all, but they're also light MMOs. And they've taken MMOs and broken them down into separate categories within the gaming sphere of games as service, right? So they took an MMO and then broke it up into three separate games. Now you have your your survival games, you have your true MMOs, you have your, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's all these different ones. MOBAs are in part of what used to be an MMO. So there's all these games. So you could say the same type of thing going, well, What's going to keep them coming back? Well, one, you have to have, one, a fun game. Regardless of what the IP is, you have to have a fun game. Regardless. Okay. Two, you have to have an actual, if you get a uh, a good games of service game, it's got to be fun. It's got to have good gameplay. Now, 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 technically, you can have bad gameplay as long as the game is fun. But if you have a good game, it's fun, and you have good controls, Right. And then then the IP, then the story comes in. OK, if you have a good story with those two other things. OK, well, then you have a successful game. This all comes down to, well, you know what I'm going to say? Make a game, sell a game. OK, so for a game, uh, for example, the new sweetheart games of service, Power World sold uh, gangbusters, which sales exceeding 25 million units in a spat of weeks. But already retention has fallen off by some 84 percent since launch. Why? Well, there's there's other things. Not everyone's going to give that full attention. OK, there's also probably many reasons when I ask uh, my my 10 year old son why he stopped playing. He said it was because the game had confusing gameplay mechanics. And again, 
if it's fun, cool. But then it, it has to have good gameplay, right? So playing said uh, because of the com confusing gameplay mechanics, he then went on to straight back into playing Fortnite, where his friends are. The initial buzz to play the game, which also had uh, the Pokemon world, was not enough to situate the durability. But here's the thing. You paid for that game. The company that made that game sold that game, made the $25 or $30 off of that game, and they don't really need you to come back because it's a single-player game with an online access type of stuff where you can come back and play with your friends, right? So they're successful. Regardless if you come back and play that game, they can continue to make that game because we all know it only costs, what, $6 million to make that game? And they made 25 million copies sold, so they're good in this particular situation. It could be argued that the competition from other established free-to-play games of service shooters drag away those gamers. These two examples illustrate the initial success does not guarantee longevity if gamers get bored or attracted to the next shiny new games. But that's for any game. That's for any game across the board. It doesn't matter. Imagine this, this, um, this concept of, well, you're, you're watching one TV show, and when you're done watching that TV show... You go watch another TV show, and they're like, well, we just couldn't keep the engagement. Well, if I'm done watching the show, I'm, I'm going to move on to something else. If I'm done playing the game, and regardless of what that time frame is, if it's two hours, if it's 200 hours, once I'm done watching, playing, reading, I'm going to move on to something else. Does that mean that other thing that I just watched is bad? No. It just means I'm done playing it, or watching it, or reading it. Okay? The worrying part of this is both games is that they are fun to play, so even fun itself may not be a sticky factor of player base retention. The sparks, uh, the sparks trouble. Now, given news from the recent report that 95% of studios are working on aim to release a live service game, it begs uh, the belief. Uh, the beggar's belief is the fear that the studio are all chasing gold rush after the gold has already been mined by those who came before them. That doesn't make any sense. If I make 15 games as a studio and one of those games is a live service game, is that really chasing anything? No, it's trying to spread out amongst your fans of, well, maybe one's like the single player stories, other ones like the multiplayer stories, other people like uh, the, the PvP, other people like the, the live service stuff. Like, it, it seems a little, I don't know, seems a little foolish to me. The abundance of the games of service titles are all competing against each other. All games are competing against each other. Just because I'm covering games and someone else is covering entertainment news and other people are covering uh, taxes all on YouTube, we're all competing. We're all competing against each other. I'm not competing just against people that are doing gaming news, right? I'm competing against everyone on YouTube. So your time is always against everybody else. So to say the abundance of new game service titles are competing against other each other, no, they're competing against all other games. You're competing against time. I'm competing against games, right? For your time, I'm competing against games, TV, radio, whatever. Time is time. Okay? So it says, by getting more successful, not less increased revenue growth and older games of service titles does not make a comfortable market for new entries. Um, repetitiveness of how attractive the market looks, similar to how, how only a few mobile games have dominated revenue in that sector. That's the same trend that has already started to occur in the console PC games of service sector as well. In a speaking event at Morgan Stanley, Warner Brothers president of global streaming and games, J.W. Uh, period, said that traditional gaming market has volatile and has also growth in revenue would also come from, where people can live and work and build and play in a world that is an ongoing basis. I don't think that's, that's not the answer for everyone, but hey, whatever. That is all very well and good, but if you look at the list of most successful games of service games, most of them are not that. Data has proven that most successful DLCs or games of service are cosmetic, and most successful games of service gameplay lead themselves for instant gratification. Outside of Minecraft and Rush, world, uh, world building has not been at all successful as a live service experience. Uh, one could argue appeal that Minecraft is because of the ver uh, versatility, its ability of anything it wants to be for the player. It's also ultimate expression for personalization. This is a very difficult... A replication for the universe and established IP or franchise. Now it says Fortnite, on the other hand, is a huge success because of one of the best dopamine hit shooters on the market. To the credit, Epic Games Fortnite has broken down to all core elements, and the games of the arena shooter entertaining are, perf are perfected or perfected it. 
In recent 1.5 million equity stake in Epic Games by Disney is testament to that fact. Now, both Minecraft and Fortnite are at the top of the games of service game because it constantly reminates themselves by simply to grasp as a perfect cosmetic microtransaction. Other successful games of service games include CSGO, War Thunder, Dota, League of Legends, which are all veterans of the live service market, making it difficult for those games to abandon these titles for newer ones anytime soon. Now, if they do move on to a new game, a games of service title, evidence of mounting up by players get wanted what they want from a short space uh, or time, then they go back to the other try to test the favorite games they're already invested hundreds of hours in. Sure. If I go back, like, look, I played World of Warcraft for five years, okay? And then I stopped playing. It's been out for 20 years, okay? I've dabbled. I've, I went back in there, right, for a couple of times, but I never stayed there because I'm just kind of grown as a person. I've grown as a thing, right? So to say that no one's going to play these things and you're going you're gonna to fight like everyone's always going to play Minecraft, like, I played Minecraft when it first came out. I loved Minecraft. I think one of, Minecraft is one of the best games ever created. I do that. I really, uh, I really do believe that because of what you can do in that game and what it is and the longevity of it. But at the same time, I don't play that every day. Does that mean Minecraft is dead? No, Minecraft is not dead. It's got 350 million people playing it uh, across the world at all times. Okay, so someone's playing it. It's a popular game. And to compare yourself to a game like Minecraft or Fortnite is ridiculous. Right. That's like comparing myself, well, to Elon Musk. Well, Elon Musk is the is the higher tier of being successful in what he does. OK, well, that that you can't compare yourself to that. You have to take yourself and compare yourself. Well, you don't have to. You can make money and be successful. You don't have to make all the money to be successful. OK, so it's an important question for a new Harry Potter live service game is what sort of game will it be? Personally, I cannot see it being a, a dopamine hit area shooter, nor can I see it as being a purely sandbox experience, narrative-driven games of service games like Destiny. Soon drop a uh, persistent in telling the expanding story because it will cost an, uh, an absolute fortune in development cycle. Instead, focusing on becoming another arena shooter, news, uh, news that Destiny 2 will also sell Ghostbusters tie-in DLC pretty much files, uh, in, or flies in the face into what expands in its own unique universe. If Harry Potter, and I, I've said this again, if if they want to make a live service game, I don't think they need to make a separate okay, Harry Potter multiplayer MMO live service game. You would go against what you already have, right? Because there's people that bought Hogwarts Legacy and people really love what Hogwarts Legacy is and they want to spend more time in that game. So if they could create something to add on to Hogwarts Legacy where... Hogwarts Legacy, if you want to play the, just the single-player game, then play the single-player game. And then if you want to go online to play the online version, that would be the best thing that it can do, like a Grand Theft Auto Online or Red Dead Redemption Online. That's how they do it. Now, those are two spectrums, right? Grand Theft Auto Online is super popular, where Red Dead Redemption wasn't as popular for them, but it still made a crap ton of money for them, right? If you take the Hogwarts Legacy and make a separate game where it's a Harry Potter, let's say, MMO, now you're taking people away from the game that you already created and then move them over to another game. Well, you don't want to do that. You want to create the game within the game that they already are in. That way, when they log into Hogwarts Legacy, they're either playing the single player version or they're playing the games of service aspect of it. But that's just my thoughts. The issue for me is, he says, the Potter universe should be built around a good narrative and stay true to the universe. This is why Hogwarts Legacy has such a huge hit. There have been many Harry Potter games before, and Hogwarts extended the Potter universe and, and engaged with the player base. Games of service games is a contrast, are designed for uh, rapid repeat replay for instance gratification, long-term retention via constantly adding content, and while also at the same time design entice repeat spending via servable microtransactions. See, I think this person's thinking wrong. What you want from, at least for the Harry Potter world, games of service, Again, you have the single player aspect of it, and then you just want to live in that world. Okay. So you would want to be able to earn stuff, go on missions and quests, earn stuff for your dorm room or maybe your own house or village, right? Something you build up with the community and have your own little section in there. That's how you continue giving them access. You don't want people to be like, you don't, you're not making an MMO. You're not making an MMO. You're making a games as service. You're just trying to get people that like that stuff to come back. Like, look at Fortnite. Fortnite doesn't do anything where you're building anything or doing anything. You're just shooting, going in, 
You're going into a 100-player um, base battle royale, build, no build. You're now playing uh, Lego Fortnite. You're now playing the, the Rock Band thing. You're now playing the Rocket League thing. You're now doing different missions where people build their own games. That's a live service game, and it has nothing to do with constantly giving um, like MMO type of stuff. It's just a whole bunch of different things where you're done with this, you move over here. You're done with this, you move over here, but you're still with inside Fortnite. Okay, this means sometimes extending their universe to explore tie-ins. Just look at Fortnite's DLC. All they all have successful implement in, into Harry Potter universe, which is somewhat limited by their own universe rules. It will not be an easy task of getting a formulated right between fans, universe relevance, and increasing monetization and sustaining players' retention. It will be more alchemy than science. One thing for more. Uh, one thing is for sure, making the game fun to play every time it's booted uh, booted days, weeks, and years down the line will require a huge investment on the part of publisher. This is not a release once-only commitment. This requires a roadmap, creativity, expand, uh, expenditure, and also staying within the confines of the Potter universe. Again, Hogwarts Legacy already has all of that stuff. Okay, let's just quickly delve into a supply side of games of service. Although there's little to the way of hard facts on how much it costs to make or run a games of service title, there are some basic principles that we can apply to costing. He says, firstly, unlike traditional pay once games, games of service need consistent additions with cosmetic gameplay and season passes, DLCs to make them relevant and also sustain its audience. Many traditional games today require numerous patches after release, but after a certain time, even though those patches will come to an end and that also means that the game is done okay well that doesn't mean patches are fixing the game patches doesn't mean the game is done if they have no more patches project teams can also then move on to their next big thing this is not the case for games of service for games of service titles there's a runaway success everyone needs to be worked on constantly both supplier and consumer it becomes a narrative ending project to stay relevant Hence why a lot of these live service games let you build your own maps. They have like a forge mode or creative mode because that takes a lot of pressure off of the actual developers themselves because the players that love playing the game are going to continue making stuff. Hence Minecraft. Hence Fortnite, right? But for those particular things, right? Hence No Man's Sky is a games of service game, yet they're constantly don't charge anything. There's, there's zero microtransactions in, in No Man's Sky, and yet that's a games of service game, okay? Development team can also use AI to help create a new content, but also new content will also need to be good prevent uh, diminishing returns on investment. Although AI can be dampened down cost and also first need to prove itself that can deliver on a creativity and also a weight of, of human teams or make them work effectively. The fact is whether AI or human, the cost of enhancing of games of service experience could end up higher than the returns of microtransaction revenues. If the new content is not compelling for the player, what happens then? What happens when players move on? <laughs> they, they move on. Y you got to make a game, and then you got to sell that game. Will the publisher just pull the plug or call it a day? Well, it all depends on how you know, good or bad your game is. It says, we've seen a sort of thing before with games such as Babylon Fall or uh, Chocobo uh, GP. The optics in which it was not great. As Sterling was pointed out, the hard stop can be a bitter pill to swallow for those gamers who invested in fails in games of service titles, both in money and time. Uh, they expected some degree of longevity pers uh, personally. And whether I see this happen, it cannot help to think that farewell message from the dolphins in the, in the Hitchhiker's Guide for, of the Galaxy. So long and thanks for all the fish. It might be at first feel humorous, but it also keeps happening and chances are attracting gamers to new games of service titles in the future become even more uh, uh, precarious. This also could explain the established games of service are doing so well. It's also because they have also been around for uh, long enough to have won hearts, minds, and wallets of loyal audiences. Although not strictly games of service business, Roblox Corp can give you an insight on the economics of running a live service model. Roblox is somewhat complicated by fact and more of a platform which runs numerous games of service titles. So does Fortnite. The company makes money from microtransactions from user-generated content, which also must, uh, must pay royalties. This means that the similarities between the two models essentially are both relied on microtransactions as income, but both rely on the consistent flow of new content to make those microtransactions happen. Becoming a member. Sarge, thank you very much for the 13 months. Appreciate that. To the date, Roblox has not made a profit, which is also a compounding problem, is the fact that the top line revenues increase year over year. 
So you have to you have uh, the losses as to whether there is a direct correlation between the two. If it's hard to say, but you also see the graph of R and D costs of keeping pace with revenue. This is economic model is repeatable with games and service titles. I suspect it is. Okay, so you can see Roblox finances. Okay, the revenues here is going up. Okay, developer exchange fees. Okay, is also going up, but they also constantly re research and development also goes up. Okay, everything's going up. But at the same time, uh, the net income is is going down. To include, the, maybe Warner Brothers can be successful while relying on the Harry Potter games as a service that enjoys longevity with a with the healthy install base like Minecraft or Fortnite. So far, Warner Brothers' attempt to Suicide Squad kill the Justice League, which is built around another well known brand, uh, DC Universe. Okay, include them in the triumph. Now, I would say this is idea for but uh, about the kids, but. What they want from the games of service is what they do want uh, want from Harry Potter game. What they want from a Harry Potter games of service can also to uh, we conceal that it's also Harry Potter's games of service is important because it's relevant, especially after the success of Hogwarts Legacy. This is what I'm saying earlier in the in the article. They already have the clientele. They have they know they have 22 million people that bought Hogwarts Legacy. That's already people that own that game. Now, obviously, maybe some people sold it off to. The GameStop or whatnot, but they know they have 22 million people that are interested in Hogwarts Legacy. They would be idiots to go make Hogwarts uh, Games of Service, right? Or Harry Potter MMO, okay? They literally have the clientele. To say that these people, these 22 million people are going to buy the next Harry Potter game that comes out, that's not guaranteed. What's guaranteed is there's 22 million people that bought this game, and if you add a games of service on top of this game, that would be way more successful since, one, you already have the map. Two, you already have the assets. Three, you already have the story and stuff is there that you can keep adding to what people already like. Okay. He says, I would also say that identical all about the kids. I already read that part. Uh, for video game analysts and new games will be perfect litmus tests to see whether the games of service has a future outside of the titles of Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, League of Legends, Call of Duty, Warzone, Destiny, Apex Legends, amongst others. So for Warner Brothers, the stakes are much higher than I wish them luck. One of my final thoughts, he says, is Warner Brothers cannot succeed with Harry Potter as a games of service. Then quite frankly, I see little future in realizing that new games of service titles because of new games will either DOA, which is dead on arrival, or have a short lifespan from increased competition by older games of service titles that will fight back to hold on to the market share. Shame, as a lot of video game studios are now pinning their hopes on this model. Again, I think um, a lot of people, I mean, if you look at a lot of the games that are successful, there's there's a lot of successful games of service games in different avenues, right? Now, look at the, what Warner Brothers is doing. One of their games that are coming out with is Multiverse of, uh, uh, Multiverses, right? Multiverses, right? That fighting game, okay? Which was out, and then it was here for a year, and then it left for a year. It's coming back out in May 28th. That's a live service, right? That's a games of service game. That's not a games of service game like an online, like a, like a Grand Theft Auto. That's also not like a Destiny, right? That's a fighting game, right? Minimal viable product where you have two people fighting, uh, or four people fighting, actually. And you can keep bringing in different IPs into that thing. That keeps people coming back to play that game, right? So you don't have to have this... Grand Theft Auto Online or Minecraft or Fortnite for a games of service game to work. They can do this in different ways and they all don't have to be successful because if one thing, right, if one thing is successful, Fortnite's successful, so if Epic wants to experiment with other things, this is covering of the cost of that, okay? Minecraft, Mojang, right, they made Minecraft. Minecraft Dungeons came out, didn't do as well, sold well, it was profitable for them, but then there's Minecraft, um, what was the one that just came out? Minecraft Legends. Didn't do very well. Actually, like, bombed, okay, in, in the over, over scheme things. Well, what is Mojang doing? Are they, are they freaking out? No, Mo, because Minecraft itself covers the cost of the Minecraft Legends that didn't make it. Movie studios do this. TV studios do this, right? 14 movies come out. 10 movies come out. One movie is going to make a crap ton of money. Two movies are going to make barely break even and everything else is going to lose money. But those three films cover the cost of everything else and they make money and the studio still survives. That's how it used to work. Now, not so much with the live service, uh, with the with the streaming services and whatnot. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Where do you think 
that they should go, Warner Brothers should go with this live service aspect or games of service, right? Do you think they should make a separate Harry Potter MMO to compete against not only their own own people that they bought Hogwarts Legacy, but every MMO out there and also all the other live service games out there? Or do they already take and supplement what's already in, or not supplement, that's, a, that's the wrong word, or do they already tap into the fan base that are in Hogwarts Legacy and then just add a online service to that? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, and subscribe. If you like what we do here, check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> All right. Let me see what you guys are saying. That was a long one, but lots of good information. Mo says, uh... PlayStation 5 Pro will be a little better than the Series X, and the Pro will only because they caught them with their pants down. Uh, you guys are talking about the PlayStation stuff. Nowadays, Alien says, nowadays it seems like a lot of uh, games uh, don't have a clear defined identity. I'm pretty sure that they contributes to the lack of success. Yeah, I think a lot of people, well, even, even if you look at Anthem back in the day, Alien, right? That's just like, what, five years old, and they had seven years to work on it. They didn't know what it was until like two years before it actually launched. When they looked at the, the E3 trailer, they're like, oh, that's what we want to do. And then they just couldn't pull it together. Same with Destiny. Destiny rebooted their, their whole title and didn't know what they were doing. Skull and Bones didn't know what the game was. And they had to change the identity of that game four times. Right? So you're absolutely correct. A lot of these people don't know what they want from it. And other people look at Marvel's Avengers. I, I absolutely loved Marvel's Avengers. They didn't see their vision for it, and then when it didn't work out, they just abandoned it as fast as possible. Private House says a good game is a good game. <clears throat> Dustin says Turbocharged Hot Wheels comes to Game Pass. Ark Survival Ascend, Evil West, those games surprise me. Can't wait. Dave Rose says, but the thing is that X does not utilize any of the cause or care about the power. Oh, you guys are still talking about the consoles. Uh, let's see what's on the X Hogwarts Legacy had uh, people I know who don't play video games all buy a console just to play it. That's what I'm saying. I think I think they would be idiots. I think they would be idiots to. If you want to make a sequel to Hogwarts Legacy, cool. You already have a player base and people that bought Hogwarts Legacy one will probably buy Hogwarts Legacy two. Right. But if you make a separate Harry Potter game, you have to prove yourself over again. Right. You got to prove yourself over again that. Harry Potter MMO or games of service game is going to be better than what you already played over at Hogwarts Legacy, right? You already have that that player base in Hogwarts Legacy. Sarge says, until a publisher or developer company gets actual sued for negligence and consumer fraud, nothing will change. Not only is the way the consumer's base grows, a pair stops buying, period. Maybe it doesn't succeed It doesn't it because it's not a good game. No, that's exactly why it doesn't succeed. It doesn't succeed because it's not a good game. If games succeed, it's because they're a good game. Yeah, they absolutely... Marvel's Avengers absolutely suffered from that, Alien. They they had a vision. And I believe that they changed that vision along the way. Okay? And then when it came out, they were like, this is what we're doing. And they're like, uh not working out. They, they, they thought it was going to be a huge success, but the initial sales weren't very good for them. So they kind of went like, mm, all right, well, let's just drag this out. Like right now, it feels like a freaking eternity, right? Suicide Squad came out a month and a half ago. Okay, a month and a half ago. It's not even been two months yet. Okay, the, the initial release for Suicide Squad was what, February First, second, something like that. Okay, it came out on the 28th because it was early access for people that pre-ordered. But that game hasn't even been out for two months yet. And it feels like eight months have passed and nothing's happening. Okay. Meanwhile, next week is when the DLC and the first the, the first uh, first season comes out. Their engine couldn't handle the scope either. The engine, I don't think, was the problem though, Jason. I think the problem with the game was... They just were chasing their tails the entire time, right? Are you talking about Anthem or are you talking about Marvel's Avengers? Just because it's a game as a service doesn't make it a bad game. I've said that all, all the time, House. 
the the game a live service game doesn't make a bad game a bad game is a bad game and a bad live service game is also still a bad game right marvel's avengers the single player aspect of the game was a good game right suicide squad single player adventure the the the, the story was a good game okay I'm not saying they're great games. They're, they're, the story for Marvel's Avengers was a good game, right? The the gameplay, the the making you feel like superheroes. The gameplay was fun, right? Each of the characters felt good. The story was good. That game was good. It was the games of service aspect of it that they would try to do that sunk that game. Suicide Squad, the story, the characters feel unique between each other. They feel good, right? The gunplay feels good. The game feels good. It's fun to play. Okay, people that played it go, it's fun to play. Game controls are good. The live service hasn't come out yet for Suicide Squad, so we don't know if that's good or bad for the games of service yet for that game. Okay, Marvel's uh, uh, Anthem. Anthem had really good gameplay, and it was fun to play, but the game was broke, buggy, and unfinished because there was literally gear sets that weren't even in the game yet for the characters that you were using in Anthem. Right? And then there was the end game that wasn't there. So that was literally an incomplete game. I wouldn't say good. It was okay, not bad, but not good. What wasn't good? Avengers or Suicide Squad? We're using the word good, Rose. I didn't say it was like fantastic or phenomenal. I said it was good. <laughs> they were both good games. Like on the scale, good is 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 good. Avengers Combat was the only thing that kept me playing. That's because the gameplay was good. Right? Regardless of how much you hate that game, Jason, and I know it, it hurts you because it, it, I'm irritated by the game itself, okay? But the game was good. The end game and the live service aspect of that game is what, what made it bad. These are facts, not the game itself, right? Gotham Knights was a good game. That wasn't a live service game. And people were upset because it wasn't live service because they wanted more of it. The story didn't keep you coming back? I'm talking about just the initial story, Rose. When you play a game and you put it down, you move on, right? Like... How often are you going back to play Guardians of the Galaxy? That's a fantastic game. Right? How many times have you gone back to play Guardians of the Galaxy if you played it at all? That that sounds like personal preference, doesn't it, Jason? You're like, well, didn't really like Kamala. I'm just saying the story itself was good. Right? I think people, uh, before any Hogwarts MMO, the test of uh, co-op and live service light of Hogwarts, before building live service MMO from the ground up, I, I don't think they should do an MMO. I think they should literally do a Grand Theft Auto, Fallout 76 type of thing for Hogwarts. You don't need a live service for more game. You just need an actual DLC for another game. Right, but the the the, <clears throat> the adding content to the game is just whatever the game's a service. Games of service is just continuously adding more stuff to that game, Sarge. So if you're a fan of whatever game that is, you want more content to come to that game.
was going the route for looter shooter out of uh out me off uh completely it makes no sense to have king shark or boomer i totally get that what you're saying there but i'm not saying anything about the looters aspect of it i'm just saying that the if you if you picked up a game to play it take live service out of it take games of service out of it take looter shooter out of it just the story right you pay you pay $60, $70 for God of War. You play through the story. You play through Spider-Man. You play through Horizon. You play single-player story, right? Single-player story. Marvel's Avengers campaign was good. Suicide Squad story was good, right? Now, when you start adding the other elements to it, well, I bought it because it's a looter shooter. I don't like the looter shooter aspect of it. I don't like the end game of it. That's completely different. I'm just saying just the single-player story. The story in Suicide Squad was not good. That's subjective, Vandal, and it is good because good meaning good. Good not saying that it's fantastic or great. Like, not good would be like um, uh, Gollum, right? Not good would be like King Kong. Not good would be like the game didn't fall apart. It wasn't like the story itself was a good story. I think you guys are, you you guys are being you, you guys are, are are talking two different things than what I'm talking about, right? When I'm saying good, I'm talking about the the game itself is not a broke buggy fucking mess, okay? Like the story is good, like it had a beginning, a middle, and an end. It made sense. It went through it. It was done. That's exactly right. Rose, I'm saying it's good. If you want to use mid, whatever, it's it's just a good story. We've already discussed this. The story is not good. There was characters that acted completely different than they did in the previous games. Bad writing. Who start? Who started? Who was different in other games? What game did you play with with Harley Quinn in it? Did you play Harley Quinn? The last time we played a game in that in that in that setting was Batman. And Batman in this game was completely brainwashed. He wasn't even Batman himself. So I don't understand where you're coming from, Vandal. Did, did we play a did we play a King Shark game? Did, did we play a a Deadshot game? I don't remember those games. Like, you're making up your own headcanon right now. One, not a Batman game. Two, Batman from the other Batman games was brainwashed by Brainiac and didn't act himself. So to say that characters are acting differently, sure. And then five years have passed, if you want to do can canonically in, in what the story was. Okay. Are, are you the same person you are today that you were five years ago? I seriously doubt that. I have 100 hours in Suicide Squad. If it was a bad game, I wouldn't have done that. The story was all right. It's not the best. Not at all. Hey, that's what I'm saying, Eclipse. I'm just saying it's good. Apparently, good in my words means it's fantastic and great. Oh, for God's sakes, Vandal. Here we go. You you can you can be okay with a character of a talking shark that's a demigod, but you're you're not okay with Harley Quinn uh able able to do what she's doing. I, I, I don't understand that logic. I just don't understand that logic. W would you be okay if um in the story somewhere uh Harley Quinn drank a potion and, and then she could do what she did? Would you be okay with that?
Well, it's not realistic. Where do they pay? Where do they get their money from? Where's their jobs? I don't understand. They were in prison this whole time. What were they doing? <clears throat> like the, the, the minuscule things that you're looking at, Vandal, are just ridiculous. They are. They're just ridiculous. All right, the next uh, next story we're going to talk about is this one from what they're talking about, the PlayStation 5. Vandal says, yes, because the character of King Shark, I'm not okay with the King Shark running around with guns. That's not the character. Yeah, but you, you, I, I'm, I'm going to end this conversation with you, Vandal, because you, you're just talking about stupid shit. We're, we're not even talking about that stuff. We're talking about that the games were good for the story as far as it wasn't broke, buggy, unfinished, and it was a good story. You're saying that it's a stupid story because Harley Quinn jumped off a 50-story building and a character shouldn't use a gun because it wasn't like that in the other games. Which is just your subjective thing that you hate, and that's why you hate it. Which is just... It's just, it's just stupid. Like, you can hate it for what you hate, but to to say certain things why the game doesn't make sense to you because it, she didn't do that in the last Batman game, this is a standalone game. It takes place in a comic book world, and they told a story within this game, which you didn't play, correct? Let's make, it, let's make every game true to life. Let's see where that gets us. <laughs> like, I get that you don't like the characters using guns. Cool. Right? But now to say, well, she can jump off 50-story buildings. That's so unrealistic. Uh-huh. In, in a world where a man is super-powered, a man can uh, make stuff with a, a ring from outer space um, for a, a billionaire, you know, can basically... You know, figure out everything he can in the world. Harley was a normal human in Gotham. Yeah, yeah, you're hung up on this whole. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, go go to a comic book channel and and, and bitch to them. All right, so so uh, Clint Eastwood or Colt Eastwood, not in, not Clint Eastwood, Colt Eastwood and Mag on their podcast talked about. It says. Uh, the Respawn guys had a dev kit talking about how they're getting Jedi Survivor uh, over on the PlayStation, the new PlayStation, and they got it up to a 4K 120 frames per second. So l let's just listen to this. Let me make sure it's... So the one that they mentioned to me, here it is, it goes, still in progress, may not be final. And yes, they're saying that this DLSS solution that they're using, which is this PSSR, is actually beyond their expectations. So okay. This is from EA. Now, this is from this is from developers at EA, specifically uh, from Respawn, and they did say that they were able to get specifically Jedi Survivor to 4K 120 with absolutely zero hiccups. Jeez. So that now, if that's true, they couldn't even do that on PC. Right, they 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 couldn't even do that on PC. So the person, uh, uh, Nickel, uh, says that he says I'm a donkey. So I legit want to be educated here. If a CPU of a PlayStation Five Pro is the same and won't ha make any difference, how is it allegedly Jedi Survivor will struggle to do 60 to begin with? Now patched is doing 4K 120. How did we gain 60 extra frames? Okay. I don't think it's going to run. Now, obviously, I think it'll run 60 frames smoother, okay? But they would have to they would have to give up. They would have to give up. If it's 4K, they even say up up to 8K, okay? Which they would they would have to give up 
the quality to make the frame rates go higher. Okay, and I can't imagine this when the game came out. Uh, it was it was in a in a in a mess to run at sixty frames. Okay, it wasn't running sixty frames. Now you're saying that the 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 PlayStation Five Pro is going to come out and Jedi Survivor is going to run at four K one hundred and twenty frames. I don't know. That'll be very impressive if it does. Right? I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying they couldn't even get the game to run 60 frames per second. Right? And it was struggling on the PC. Right, Salty says it still runs like shit on PC. Still haven't finished it yet. So that... I guess they still have time though, Salty. Right? The console's coming out. The console's coming out down the road. Uh, so maybe they'll maybe they'll they'll optimize it a little bit more. It says uh, unless they drop the resolution significantly, right, and then scale up, you're not getting you're you're, you're going to get worse detail. The higher latency, okay, CPU limited uh, limited game won't get 120. Maybe a smooth 60. Jedi Survivor is optimized to shit. Bad example. This is them coming out. This is not an example. This is literally them coming out, respawn, saying that they got this game to run 4K 120 frames per second. So to say it's a bad example, it's that's the example. That's just coming from them. There's no time they moved to the third one been abandoned yeah I, I'm, I'm i'm just confused on everyone's hyped up about this we have a, we have an article we're going to read about the the playstation 5 pro right okay so so playstation super resolution pssr is aiming for 4k 120 frames per second or 8k at 60 frames per second right so the PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which is the first integrated into PlayStation 5 Pro internal aiming for 4K 120 frames per second or 8K 60 frames console gaming, Insider Gaming has learned. Now the news comes from a following week leak of PlayStation 5 Pro, which revealed that the PlayStation 5 Pro codename Trinity will be incorporating a PSSR to upscale the higher resolution. Currently the PSSR works at SKD 9.0 in PlayStation 5 Pro to bring 4K resolution. Inside Gamer has also revealed that some specif specifications on upcoming PlayStation 5 Pro, which you can read uh, read here, outlined in a document provided to Inside Gamer under the conditions that they are not made public. The PlayStation ambitious with the PSSR is active to 4K 120 frames per second and 8K 60 frames per second. Uh, the wish list there is not targeted for the PlayStation 5 Pro due to hardware limitations. It is the internal goal for PSSR to future console integration. The PlayStation 5 Pro PSSR currently supports a 3840 uh, by 2160 and is currently aiming for 4K 60 frames per second and 8K 30 frames, but it's unclear if those internal milestones can be passed. Now, the PSSR memory requirement is roughly 250 megabytes and 180 megabytes of PSML library and 64 from the game. Two case studies of two unnamed first-party games include Game 1, targeted image quality close to fidelity mode at 1800p with performance mode of 60 frames per second. Standard PlayStation 5 performance mode is 1080p at 60 and fidelity mode at 1800 at 30 frames. PlayStation 5 Pro 1440p at 60 frames PSSR used. Now, the Game 2 targeted ray tracing to gameplay. Standard PlayStation achieved 60 frames per second without ray tracing, and PlayStation 5 Pro achieved 60 frames with ray tracing. So there you go. I don't know. A lot of people get like excited about this, uh, the new consoles and whatnot, and I just find it funny. I don't think a lot of people are going to pick up this new system. Uh, I think what you're going to get is a lot of upgrades from the people that already have a PlayStation, which are PlayStation like fans that people just like the that type of you know they got to keep up with the joneses and they'll either pass it down or trade it in to get the newest uh the newest console um but i don't see like all of a sudden the number going from like 54 million to 110 million the thing the reason they're bringing this out is because 
they see a stopping point, right? They see a saturation point of people like, well, we got to get other people. But I think a lot of people are just going to switch from the PlayStation to the PlayStation 5 Pro. And then other people are just not going to get PlayStation, right? One, not because the PlayStation's bad in any way, shape, or form. It's because people are, we're in a recession. A lot of people are in recession. A lot of people can't afford this stuff. And this is why, one, the console sales are not happening as fast as they want it to be, right? And two, a lot of people are just looking at it going, well, I don't know. We bought these things. We had to wait two, three years to get certain games on all the systems, okay? So why should I get this system now, right? Why should I get this now? I'll just wait, you know, two years after the... So it comes out this holiday. So by like 2026, people will be like, all right, I'll buy a PlayStation now, right? I'll buy a, a Switch now. I'll buy an Xbox now. Um, so I don't really see a lot of people all of a sudden going, oh, dude... One, we don't even know how much this is going to be. Is it going to be the same price as the PlayStation 5? Or is it going to be a $600 system? Is it going to be more? People are saying that the graphics card in there is going to be a, a, up to a, like a 40, a 4070 or 4080. And I, I seriously doubt that considering those cards are like a grand a piece. I don't really think they're going to take a grand piece of stuff and put it into hardware and sell it to you for 600. Right? I don't think that's happening. But, uh, you know, smoke them if you got them. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 interested in the PlayStation uh, Five Pro. If, like I said yesterday, if Grand Theft Auto Six comes on the platform, it's a timed exclusive or something. It's only on that, uh, only on PlayStation. Then I will pick up a PlayStation. I don't know if I'll pick up a Pro, okay? Because if the Pro is like six hundred dollars, and I can get a PlayStation Slim for like three hundred. Then I'll just play Grand Theft Auto. I don't need the latest, greatest, highest tech thing. I'll just play the game, right? Um, on the console that I can can afford at the time. So these are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. Do you think that the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be running 4K 60 frame or 120 frames and 8K at 60 frames? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. Just like just like when they told us this time around, it took a while before it even happened. <clears throat> Horseman says 4K 120. I'm sorry, 8K 60 frames. Okay, I'll believe it when I see it. This machine is going to be rely on heavily on the upscaling if they think of it hitting that. I'm done with respawn. They lost my faith, so I'm not praising the game and I can't optimize just because I finished it early uh, in uh, in three years. It's going to be like 720. 4K 60. <laughs> Personally, I'm bothered. Uh, bothered for the pro? Oh, not bothered. Wait. 8K 30 frames yesterday. 8K 60 frames PlayStation 6. PS Pro is going to be $700, $800. If it's that expensive, I'll be honest, I would rather invest an additional couple, you know, save up, and I would rather buy a PC. You buy a PC, a PC, if you get a graphics card, that's two times, two generations ahead of what's in a, in a, in a console. Right. I might as well get a PC. Right. For $700, $800, I would, I would rather get a PC, Vandal. GTA 6 will barely hit a steady 30 frames per second on base PlayStation 5. Better question is, how much will popcorn cost by the time we get to watch the <laughs> scale apocalypse? Yeah, yeah, it'll be expensive. GTA 6 ain't, ain't going to be exclusive. Rockstar ain't leaving money on the table. Exclusive, though, it's not leaving money on the table, right? They're not leaving any money on the table. If it's a timed exclusive or they get something extra on the PlayStation, that's not money on the table. Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to be the most successful game regardless if it's timed exclusive. Grand Theft Auto, before, what was it? I think four, right? All the other Grand Theft Autos before that were only on PlayStation. Okay? Up until, I think, four, was it not? And then it came out for Xbox. Uh, uh, before that, like Vice City, San Andreas, they were on Xbox, but they came in after the fact, didn't they?
I'm buying a pro day one, even if it's a thousand bucks. Good for you. I remember people saying 700, 800 for PlayStation 5. Here again for pro. Um, do you remember Titan? People paid $1,200 when the PlayStation first came out because of the shortage. Now, obviously, the, the retail price wasn't $1,000, but no one could buy them, and then they were online, and then the only place you could buy them was people that were selling them. So $700, $800 is a steal for some of those people. I don't believe Xbox uh, existed when the first uh, GTA launched on console. Um, the first GTA launched, I believe it was... Was it GTA 3? That was 2001. Yeah. No, October 2001 for PlayStation 2 and May of 2022. Or, I'm sorry, not 2022. 2002 for Windows. And then in November of 2003... Yeah, Xbox was out. They just didn't get it. PlayStation had the exclusive, and that was Grand Theft Auto 3. Right? Vice City came out on October 29th of 2002. Uh, let's see. PlayStation 2 on October 29th, 2002, North America, and uh, on the 8th in Europe. Capcom published the game in Japan on the 20th of May of 2004, and PlayStation 2 in Windows, and the game was added to Rockstar Game Launcher in September of 2019. And it came to Xbox much later down the line. Now, I'm not saying that it's happening, but I'm saying it potentially could happen if they wanted it. Money talks, though. I don't think Sony didn't take notice of what people uh, were paying uh, scalpers, did they? Well, did you, did you know about the story about, um, was it NVIDIA? I think NVIDIA was caught some time ago. I think it was 2015, 2016. I could be mistaken of the year. But NVIDIA was saying that we're going to have $300 cards, right? It, uh, it might have been a little later. Maybe it was 18, 19. But they, um, they put the cards out, and they were supposed to be $300. They got bought up real fast, and then they were sold online for three times the amount. Well, they were caught later um, where a underneath the umbrella, it was a subsidiary of the company where people were buying it and they were selling it a third party and then boosting the prices up. So to say that companies don't do that, you know, they can just be smarter about it. They got caught because they weren't smart about it. But the company was literally buying up their own stock and then selling it for three times the price. Was it PlayStation 2? Yeah, PlayStation 2. Yeah. That's one of the reasons PlayStation 2 sold so well back in the day. is because of Grand Theft Auto 3. Wonder if there's going to be anti-scalper measures in place. No. <laughs> no. Well, that's what you're saying. Sony knows their audience will pay more. Oh, for sure. Right. The companies don't care. If they put the, the thing out there and it's like 700 bucks and people buy it and they sell out, they don't, they don't care if it's a scalper or not. They sold the boxes. They did exactly what they did, what they wanted to do. Hey, we put a million boxes out there. They all sold. Okay, fantastic. Now the scalpers sell it for double the price. And everyone's like, I can't get a, I can't get a PlayStation. So I was like, great, we made our money. This works great for us. Supply and demand. We put them out there, scalpers pick them up, and right? Do you guys do you guys forget what happened in, in 2019 and 2020? Right? When we were getting ready to buy these things. 
and there were people had to wait in queue lines, and you had to show a t like it was ridiculous. It happens all the time. I had I had to wait in line at a Kohl's, and had to fight people off to get to a cage, so I can get a switch. Just like with the PlayStation Portal and the PSVR, just announced that they stopped making PSVR uh, PR because they're not selling anymore. Yeah, we're uh, perfect timing. Eclipse, yeah, a perfect timing. Yeah, that's what we're, we're talking about next. I camped outside a GameStop for twenty-seven hours to get my PlayStation Five. Right? Was that right when it came out, or was that down a couple of months? Um, down the road, Rose. It was crazy. I don't care about waiting in line anymore. I don't need it right away. It'll come out. It is what it is. Day one? Okay. All right, so the next story we're going to talk about if you guys like what we do here, please make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you like to go above and beyond it, become a member as little as five dollars. We cover stories and have conversations uh, Monday through Thursday from ten o'clock in the morning till noon Eastern. So a year after launch, PlayStation has reportedly paused a PSVR two production due to slow sales. Now, I find this hilarious because I remember on this channel talking to you guys were saying that this game this thing is going to sell like hotcakes this is going to be the best selling thing ever and i went it's a niche market it's not going to sell that much right and and here we are what <laughs> one one year later they literally stopped making right they literally stopped making production of it because the the sales were so slow okay so sony has published two psvr2 games since it launched a year ago fantastic Sony has reportedly paused production on a PlayStation VR 2 just one year after launch so it can deal with backlog of unsold units. Okay. A new report of Bloomberg claims that PlayStation VR 2 shipments have been getting progressively smaller every quarter since the heads uh, headset launched in February 2023, and Sony has now paused production altogether. I said the reason for this is that why would I buy a PSVR 2 headset when I can go buy another headset that can work with other th multiple things, right? Where... This only works for the PlayStation, and you can only work if you have a PlayStation. So not only do people hard still to find PlayStations when, when it came out a year ago, you could buy them, but still, you got to buy a $500 box, then you got to buy a $500 headset, right? Just so you could go play one or two games that came out for them, right? Hence why they decided that they were going to take the PSVR 2 and start working with it so it could play other PC games, because that's a smart move to do. All right, and not being sarcastic, that it's an actual smart move to do. I don't know why they did what they did. They're like, nope, our headset only works with PlayStation. Be like, okay, bold move. Let's see what happens. And we saw what happens because now they stopped making the headset and the headsets that are out there, they're now trying to work with them to work on PC as well. It says the report sites for a research firm, IDC, which tracks deliveries and retailers around the customer, uh, consumer or customer sales, which says that Sony is surplus assembled a PSVR 2 headset throughout the supply chain. Now, the PlayStation VR 2 was released on February 2023 at a retail price of $549 and $529 in pounds. Uh, and also, but Sony also still yet to officially confirm how many units has sold to date. Well, you know what happens when you don't save the units that you sold? People were running with, oh, they're selling millions of them. They're, they're, they're flying off the shelf. See, they're, they're not in stock anymore. So th that means they're selling very well. Sure. If I put 10 on the shelf and 10 sell, and then I report that, those 10 flew off the shelf really fast, then it sold really well. You're absolutely correct, okay? So the previous estimate by IDC suggests that the sales had started slowly, suggesting around 270,000 units sold by the end of March of 2023. That's a huge number, huh? By Sony later claimed that PlayStation VR 2 sold around 600,000 units during the first six weeks of availability, okay? In Bloomberg reports that IDC estimates that the sales declined 
So 435,000 in quarter uh, 2023 quarter 2, then 343,000 uh, in quarter 3, and then 325,000 in quarter 4. Now Sony first party uh, game support for PlayStation VR 2 has been slim. When the headset launched, Sony released Horizon Call of the Mountain and VR update to Gran Turismo 7. In the years since then, only other game Sony Interactive Entertainment has published for the headset has been Farewell Ultra, an online team-based shooter which also released in August and received a Metacritic score, Metacritic score of 61. Earlier this year, the CCO of uh, Rec Room and popular VR social platform said there's no plans to bring it to PlayStation VR 2 because the studio couldn't justify the cost. That quote, the idea for the wor the ideal world that we could love to bring the rec room into PSVR 2, but we just can't justify the cost base of the numbers. Uh, Cameron Brown said in January, sucks, I know, but that's the truth. Last month, Sony confirmed that testing the PlayStation VR 2 com uh, compatibility with PC and the company aims to enable players to connect their PSVR 2 headset to PCs later this year in order to access more games. Well, here's another problem. Even with them moving it over, they got to lower that price. They got to lower that price point for the PSVR 2, even if it does work for, for games. So look, when when companies come out and they're happy to tell you the number, okay, obviously they had a number in their head, right? Like for instance, let's say when I go live today, I'm like, man, I want 20 people. We have 37 people. I'll be like, we're a huge success, okay? So like I asked for 20 people, we overshot that. And now I can go, hey, uh, 30 and still gaming stream today. Uh, he had double the amount of people that watched that he thought he would, right? But if I didn't have that and less people showed up, okay, I wouldn't say anything, right? Because I don't want to, I don't want to promote that I've got less people to come to my stream than I had the day before, right? So when companies come out and they, they say, oh, we, we sold 635,000 units in the first three weeks or whatnot, cool. But then that number where their expectations were and then weeks after weeks and weeks go by and they're like, oh, well, there goes that number. They don't want to say anything because it's a, it's not a success, okay? When they come out and tell you it's a success, that means they're happy with the number. If they never tell you the number, that means they underperformed, okay? Underperformed doesn't mean failure. It just means that they didn't hit the number they thought they were going to hit at that thing. Take it with any game. Suicide Squad. Maybe they wanted to sell 4 million units and it sold thirty, you know, 3.6 million units. They went, mm, that's below. Let's not talk about it, right? Type of thing, okay? And that's what happens. Now, with the, the PSVR 2... Stop selling, right? They got to get rid of the, they got to get rid of the stock before they bring in more. And they're not selling. Well, there's other units out there. There's other headsets out there that people can pay with their, um, you know, for their PC, their VR. You can get the MetaQuest, right? You can get these other other systems that are around the same price, but yet you don't need a PlayStation, right? The PSVR two, yeah, it's five forty nine, but technically it's a thousand dollars. Well, if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a headset. I can get a headset standalone for three hundred dollars less than that. And I don't need a computer. I don't need a console. I can just get a headset. So I think they priced themselves in a weird spot and that you also needed um, you also needed a PlayStation. Now, I get it, okay? They want to keep their in interior, like, we know that these are the fans and this is what they want. But at the same time, your headset only works for that console, and that was a dumb move. These are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. What do you think about the PSVR 2? Are you going to go one and buy one out? Uh, if it goes on sale, are you waiting for them to fix it so it works with PC games? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please make sure you share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. Not a shocker, VR just doesn't sell well and console isn't always a gimmicky. Yep. I said this in the very beginning. It doesn't matter if we, it doesn't matter who comes out with what, right? A headset, right? Everyone's like, oh, do you think Xbox is gonna come out with a headset? I'm like, no. They're not even selling Xboxes. You think they're gonna sell another piece of gear? Right? Like, they didn't want to jump in the market because they would rather just make games that maybe potentially down the road can just work with VR with other people making that headset. Okay. When they, when they first announced this, I was like, this is not going to sell well. Everyone's like, everyone came to Sony's defense. No, no, it's going to sell well. I'm like, it's a niched market. And not only is it a niche market, but it's a niche market, and you can and you have to buy the PlayStation for this to work. Okay? So, it was just a bad move from the beginning. Mo says Portal is next. Funny how someone's saying that PSVR 2 wasn't a flop. Wonder what they say now. I mean... 
potentially it's not a flop, but it's just not a, it, it just didn't sell very well. But again, it's a niche market. Like VR is just a niche market. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not protecting them. Like we don't know what their, what their actual sales numbers are. Right. Vandal. So what I'm saying is a flop would be like, if they wanted to sell a million units and they sold like 200,000, that would be a flop. Right. We don't know their actual sales. It could be a flop. 100%. We just don't know the actual, what they expected. They would have to know it's a niche market, right? They would have to know it's a niche market. So we don't know, did it sell more or less than the last PSVR? They don't share those numbers. Focusing on making Portal 2 into an actual PlayStation 5 portal. That's another thing, the portal that you guys are talking about. Now, I know Rose is saying it's fine, it's still selling. Again, if I take 10 items and put it on the thing and they sell really fast, doesn't mean they're selling overall in abundance, right? They make... Nintendo's brilliant at this. Nintendo did this with the Switch as they as they went along, right? They only give a certain amount and then they sell it real fast and then they they, they give them more, okay? They they have all of them made. They they made all the ones that they made. They could have they could have launched them as as fast as possible, but they didn't because they know supply and demand. So they're like, well, if we make them where it looks like they're they're selling out super fast, people it makes a frenzy, it makes a market for them, right? Now I'm not saying that's what the portal's doing, but again, the problem with the portal is you need a PlayStation Five, and that's the biggest problem with the portal. If they just made a a PS Vita again, right? Or the make the portal where you can actually play your games and you don't need a PlayStation and you could just buy the portal. That would be a huge change. They messed up so bad in the games they've made, the specs for the VR 2, so no back uh, compatibility or other VR games aren't easily portal. That's... <laughs> it's so bad. PC uh, portal is doing very well. PS VR 2 is just needs an extraction shooter with bugs and we'll be fine. Is there a sales number that you guys... Because you guys keep saying that PS Portal is doing very well. I don't know. I don't follow that shit. So, is there a number that they that they shared? Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Uh, to me, it's just a gimmick. It's too early to see if the infancy for me, uh, VR overall. Well, VR has been around for decades. It's always going to be a niche market. Always going to be a niche market. <clears throat> Amazon's always out of stock. But do they, the, the problem is, do they restock the stock and then it's out again? Or is it just out of stock? Breaking news, the PSVR 2 Remaster Remake coming soon. Go on, Ron. They'll just bundle them together and get rid of the stock. Go on, Argus. Maybe people would buy it, you know, if they had games. VR needs a GTA 6 for it to become popular. I don't even think it becomes popular with that. VR is such a niche... You could put the greatest game ever on VR. People get nauseous on that thing. A lot of people can't put the headset on. Only two games, only two uh, first party games. No, only two games. It's an anchor. You buy a PSVR 2, you're further uh, anchoring yourself to the PlayStation making harder to leave. That's true, Krebsy, right? But that's what all the stuff is. But Sony's business model is selling hardware, right? And they know that they have a, a a base. The problem, though, right now is not enough people are moving over from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, right? 54, 55 million people have a PlayStation 5. There's still 122 million people that had a PlayStation 4. And if... 54 million that were PlayStation 4 owners are now PlayStation 5 owners. You're still missing two-thirds. 
of the people that have a PlayStation 4 that haven't moved over to PlayStation 5 yet. And if they're not moving over to a PlayStation 5, they're not buying a, a headset. They're not buying the portal because it doesn't work, it doesn't work with any of those things. Right? It only works with the PlayStation 5. Sony could have uh, made a VR headset backwards compatible with PC Compat. And second screen for PlayStation 5, it would be a good idea. I think Sony is just so tightened. They're so, like, they're like, people have the PlayStation, they're going to buy this, right? Like, that's the thing. Where people, I look at it and go, okay, if I was interested in this headset, I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe I like Sony and I want to buy their headset because their headset's better than like the MetaQuest or something, right? But I can't use their headset on anything else except the PlayStation. So now investment-wise, I have to buy the headset and the console where you can just buy that, right? Now, again, I didn't buy that. Akuta Papa gifted me that, right? But that is much more appealing to buy than a PSVR 2 where I need to buy another $550 system on top of the $550 headset. Like the, the will of a friend of mine that says a VR for PC. He used to play it all the time. Now he doesn't touch it. It's fun for a while. And he lost appeal pretty fast. I was like that. I played it a lot when, it came, when, I, when I first got it. And then I stopped. But when I travel, I use it a lot. And it is cool. Right? I love you bringing that instead of just bringing my iPad now. It's much more immersive. I do a lot of work. I do my editing, right? Because I, I, I have a, a virtual PC. So with that headset, I'm like sitting in my office basically, and I'm doing all my editing on all my screens from not even being in my house. They are doing that with the current portal. They're unlocking the cloud on it. As soon as that happens, I hope that happens. Okay? I hope that happens. Because if it doesn't happen, what would happen in just in, in, in this world, right? Subjective, right? Or speculative, I should say. Not subjective. Speculative. What if the portal that people bought never, never gets the cloud thing and never actually becomes... A portal. It's just a thing that you can play your game on from your console. <clears throat> All I'm saying is the portal is a popular in Spain. You guys are saying, well, equals sold out uh, whatever limited stock. My question though is is Titan is it is it restocking or is it just sold out? That that's my question, right? There's a difference between sold out and always sold out, right? If it's sold out because they keep coming in and they keep leaving as fast as they come in, cool. But if they, it's sold out and they just don't get another stock in, that's that's different. And I'm not saying either way. I'm I'm asking a question, is it happening where there it's completely sold out all the time? Or is it you know the stock comes in, it's gone before it even puts on the shelf. If you make a limited number of something and then sell them, depending on how limited it is, I wouldn't call that successful. That's a success only within a certain parameters. That's right, Argus. And that's what I'm asking. Right? Because it's it's very easy to to make a million items, right? And if I put all million items out and they don't sell, but if I make a limited, if I take those million items and then go, oh, five showed up at the store, people buy, they're like, oh, dude, I bought it, I got one. And then I let it sit and then bring it. The million sells better than if I put them out there and everyone goes, oh, there, and they don't sell. You, you see what I'm saying? There's a weird, There's a weird thing people do. If they see a whole bunch of stuff on the shelf, they won't buy it, right? This goes with any kind of good. But if there's a limited time or something, people will buy two, three of them. <clears throat> I missed where, where did Argus say that? I missed my spot now. There it is. 
No Resident Evil 4 is PSVR 2. Spending all my time on my Xbox, Game Pass. Uh, titles say two, two Sony publisher games for VR 2. Other devices better at being portable than the portal. There's only two first-party VR titles. There's such a bunch of third-party stuff. What's the third-party stuff? How many games came out? Their list. There a full list besides me scrolling like this. Games list. <clears throat> Does the, uh, my question is, does the PSVR 2, is it backwards compatible with the older games as well, or only the new games? It only works the PlayStation 5, correct? PlayStation VR 2. Alright, so there's 40... Is there 42 games? <clears throat> 42 games? But a lot of these... A lot of these came out a long time ago. So since, since the game came out, or since the headset came out, Okay. We have Horizon Call of Mountain. This is video games, PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR 2, right? We have Ghostbusters Rise. We have the Foglands. We have Sea Smash VRS. We have Arizona Sunshine 2. We have Horizon the Call of Mountain. So you got one, two. We'll throw Gran Turismo 7 in there, even though it's in 2022, because the headset came out in 2023, correct? So since since 2023, uh, Kill Kill It With Fire VR, Fantasia Vision, or Fanta Vision, Another Fisherman's Tale, and Sushi Ben. So you got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'll, I'll give them what fifteen because there's some of them that don't have dates here. So I'll, I'll assume they come out uh, that they came out recently. Hold on, I gotta put music on. PSVR 2 has 260 games based off of Wiki Give No Date when these were. <clears throat> PSVR 5, uh, PSVR 2 though, right? Not PSVR 1. We're talking about just the games that came out since people bought the PlayStation VR 2 and the games that came out for them. Yeah, Argus, we, we talked about that. So another car in the forest, uh, moving assets around, nothing uh, affecting the tech limits. 
Uh, where's my Ghostbusters game? PSVR 2 cannot play PSVR 1 games. Why should I buy a new... Uh, why should I buy a new one? Salty says. 179 PSVR 2 and 452 PSVR 1. <clears throat> the, 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 the conversation we're having is since the PSVR 2 came out, how many games came out for it? We're not talking about older games. We're just talking about the newer games that came out for PSVR 2. You're saying 179 games came out? It launched in February of 2023. So I was just looking at games that came out in 2023 and passed. Now, sure, I can say I, I bought an Xbox and I can play all the games back backlog and stuff. I'm just talking about if you, if you buy a headset, you're probably buying it for games that you think are coming out. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically how many games came out since the headset launched. It looks like there's like, I see 10. I'll give them 15. Now, if you buy a MetaQuest or you buy another headset, there's literally hundreds of games that have come out on PS, you know, on, on, on VR, not PSVR, but just VR, right? So it's like, if you buy a headset for less money, you can get more games, right? Hundreds of games have come out since someone bought a headset for MetaQuest 3. And you didn't and, and, and you don't need a console. Correct, Titan. Correct. Right on top, of, right, and then it goes down like how many games weren't for VR, but now they have a VR mode and stuff like that. That's why I was specifically saying how many games came out since the PlayStation VR two came out since February. You have that list? Let me see that list, uh, Krebsy. Thank you. That that's the same thing I'm looking at. <laughs> is, that the, is, is that the same thing you just sent me? Oh, there it is. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> okay. Current upcoming PlayStation VR two exclusives. Okay, so this is. The article lists games for PlayStation VR 2 headset. There are currently 260 games on this list. Let's go with... What is this? Um, the port's cross-buy. Game can be played at no additional cost. If one owns a PlayStation VR version. Okay, so you got to take those out. Supports cross-play. Cross-play as far as game demo is GD game demo also available for free. Oh, I know you guys are buying. I know you guys are buying a PlayStation VR 2. I know you're paying buy a PlayStation for $500 and then the headset so you can play Angry Birds VR Isles of Pigs. I know that's what you guys are doing. You guys are true gamers. <laughs> I know that's what it is. All right, so there's there's quite a bit, right? I, I I filtered through, so I got rid of the this stuff down here. Where this is like backwards, you know, using other stuff. So there's quite a bit. I don't know. A lot of these are to be announced, so technically they're not out. So.
got February. Lots in February when they when it launched. Vacation Simulator. Lots of really big games here. Now see, how is this? See, this doesn't count. So, <clears throat> this game came out in 2020. Sure, it works for PlayStation 5, but it's not a game that was made... Right? Enhanced edition for PlayStation VR 2. So yeah, that that list is that list is quite quite um that that game came out way before. Sure, you can play it on the PlayStation VR two, but it's not a game that came out for the PlayStation VR two. We would have to go through that list and be like, all right, well that game came out. Yeah, see, this, this game came out in 19... Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> the seventh guest VR. I mean, come on. Can you play Minesweeper? I'm not sure. Minesweeper on a seven-story virtual... Virtual space. All right, what we got here? We got... There's one other thing I wanted... Oh, here's the thing. Now, I don't know... This is super rumor, right? Don't even know, like, the full source of this. But there was talks a couple months ago about Sony being unhappy with Bungie, okay? Now, take this with a super, super grain of salt, you know. So, it says, I'm writing this on a throwaway. Please use this info to collab with other sources you may have, okay? It says, eternal perspective at Sony is very negative towards Bungie right now. It's seen as a failed investment and strategies uh, being uh, discussed revolve around more recouping losses. One eternal leader from U.S. is fighting to take over the right, uh, right the ship, while many others across the Pacific want a much harsher method. The former U.S. leader holds a lot of respect from the overseas leadership, so it's likely he or she will get their way. The person's perspective is that there's many uh, uh, executives at Bungie, okay? Uh, who are not doing their jobs and hindering the organization. It is believed that the workers are skilled, but the leadership is unable to perform their duties. Okay. It says Bungie is in a hard spot because pre-order numbers are lower than anticipated. It says, I apologize. I do not have the details on actual numbers. Now, Sony believes that the finances will not, not allow Bungie to avoid a takeover, even, even um, with another round of layoffs, as it would cannibalize the development or future revenue. It says, overall, Sony has uh, been very upset at Bungie's leadership. They have not been able to successfully advise Sony teams. And while Lightfall is an internal revenue targets, every target since it has been missed an escalating decline, Bungie's leadership regularly reschedules meetings with Sony's leadership. Uh, know the next time slot can be months away. It says, I hope uh, this sheds uh, some light ongoings from Sony's side. I believe that the takeover would allow Sony to, to turn Destiny into a more profitable game and this sounds bad, but it's being treated as a lightning in a bottle. Sony's leadership wants to nurture the game and understands the more aggressive monetization that would not be healthy. There will also be a, be a monetization model switch, though as it believed the current model is too confusing and the main difference between the U.S. leader and Japan leaders getting their way matters more for Bungie's in development titles. If, uh, if Japan's leadership gets their way, teams for the future titles will be gutted and reformed. So I, this came across right before, um, right before I, I went live, which is interesting, right? It's 6 a.m. It, it got posted this morning. Like, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, right, with Bungie. And it's very interesting to me that I want to know what they mean 
when they say, you know, because they say that there's revolve around more than uh, recouping losses. The eternal leader from the U.S. is fighting to take over the right and right the ship. Okay, where's the other part? Of it? Uh, hindering the organization. I believe that the workers are skilled, but the leadership is unable to perform their duties. Like, that's huge, right? The leaders are just kind of just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Bungie's at a hard spot because the pre-order numbers are lower than anticipated. Now, again, we don't know what that number is. Maybe they want to hit 5 million, and like 2 million, 3 million. I don't know. I'm just throwing numbers out there, right? To, like, way, way under, uh, way under, right? And when they say overall, Sony has been very upset with Bungie's leadership. Like, what are they going to do, right? So Bungie's just going to... Like, Sony's just going to take Bungie out back and shoot him? Like, what, what's going to happen there? Right? Because they, they say they, the titles, they would rather gut the whole, gut and reform the entire studio, which would be huge. Next story, Bungie leaders create new studio. Right? They leave, they leave, and they just start a brand new studio. And yet they lose their, their IP yet again. How, how long would that take, Right? For people to realize that, hey, like they they left Microsoft, they lost the their IP for Halo. They they escaped barely with their their teeth from Activision and Blizzard from losing Destiny from them or to them, and then now they sell the company to Sony, <laughs> and then they're gonna lose their IP. They're losing their IP of Destiny to Sony. Right? That's crazy. But it's not Bungie's fault. It's never it's never Bungie's fault. Oh no, there'll be a destiny. Because Sony will own Destiny. They will just change the whole outcome. Rebby says, but uh is it anything we didn't already know? Could it easily connect the dots to speculate? I've been saying that for type of stuff for months. It's not years for some topics. Can't wait for Destiny 3. Yeah, it's it's crazy to me though that obviously this is very speculative because we don't know where the source is or what's happening here. But it is fun to kind of try to like talk about like what happens to Bungie. Let me let me ask you this, right? Those of you that love Destiny, right? You love Destiny, right? And I'm not trying to talk shit or anything. I'm not literally asking a question. Okay. If the leadership left, like when we hear like, oh, Dice leaders left to go make another studio and made, uh, you know, the, the, the people that used to work for Dice made a, a separate studio, or the people who used to work for this company made a different studio. Those of you that love Destiny, love love Bungie. Bungie's done, right? Bungie's done. They're they're not coming back, right? Sony owns Bungie. They're gonna buy this buy this statement. The leadership of Japan would like to just gut and reform the entire thing. Okay. So let's say Bungie leaves and makes another studio. Okay. Would you fund that game? Like, would you support that studio? Would you be willing to be like, man, wherever they go, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to buy whatever they're selling. That's my question to you, chat. Right. If, if the leadership left and made another studio, would you follow them and go, go wherever they go? <clears throat> I would honestly consider returning to Destiny if it was taken from Bungo. So Morcat, you're you're saying, or Mucat, uh, yeah, Morcat, sorry. So what you're saying is that you wouldn't follow Bungie if they open up another studio. You would stick with you would stick with Destiny, with with what they're doing, the way that Sony wants to do it. Bungie replaced would be definitely better than Destiny. I also I highly dislike Bungie and their agenda, attitudes, and how they handle. Some of, uh, some of the community. If Bungie's management gets fired, I hold the door open. <laughs> Perhaps he says, hell no, the talent is what makes the game uh, good. Leadership can go fuck themselves. Bungie staff put me off to the game and the time of the YouTube channel got deleted over Density 2. Take down claims. I got no help at all from, uh, so F them. Uh, Clip says, of course, they would, be, uh, they would be Bungie. Fans are some of the, the best fans in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 reading that I could just hear the sarcasm I could just hear the sarcasm I would not and yes it would stick a, stick with PlayStation I would check out their game but no pre-order if Robert Jones would be like well, I'll walk over there and see what's going on let me, let me see what's happening 
looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. <laughs> I'll wait for I'll I'll wait for day one. <laughs> grass might be all right. Yeah, the grass might be right over there. I lot on a Destiny last night and got a hoverboard. Oh, congratulations! Here, there you go. There's. <laughs> Get the hoverboard. Did you get did you get did you get your Ghostbusters? As long as they don't fire the people who actually make the game. Well no. Did you hear what I said? The the the, the last statement is if Japan's leadership gets the way, teams for future tiles will be gutted and reformed. Right? Gutted. Doesn't just mean gutted like just the leadership. They they gotta they gotta cut in and take it out. You know what I mean? It would depend on the uh if they made honestly if it was also return form of old bungee, probably. But the new, I could care less. Paul says the bungee of old is long gone. The guys that locked in the room eating pizza, working hard, pumping out amazing games. Yeah, the different different business now. Mode says, we all know the hoverboard came from Warframe. <laughs> oh, let me put my music back on. $20 for a hoverboard? You paid $20 for a hoverboard? For God's sakes. The white hoverboard expires at the end of the Guardian games. If you want a permanent one, you have to pay $25 or grind the hell a long way. Job, good. Hoverboard was free. Okay. Dupla says bye bye Bungie. How's the how's the finals going for the uh, for the X Battlefield devs on season two? Oh, two hundred forty thousand to twenty k. As soon as they found the the core player base, I haven't followed it. Is it still good? The problem with that, if that's true, if it went from two hundred forty to twenty, right? The very first story you talked about is games of service type of thing, right? And they lose their player base. That 20k is going to go down to 10k, and that 10k is going to go down to 5k, right? And and when they increment, when they when they put something back in, it's going to inject people to come back for just a bit, but then it, it drops off big time. Brian isn't bad if you do it right. Are you talking about the uh, for for the finals, Jones? Old Bungie's already spread out to other studios. Dude, the hoverboard was the easiest thing I ever got in the game. The finals BR would be insane. Only a matter of time. I don't think they would make a BR, do you? Doesn't that doesn't that defeat the purpose of what the finals is? Like, if you just make another BR game, then you don't stick out. I mean, I love watching the finals. I think it's great. Esports type of game. I watch it all the time with streamers. I'm just not good at it. Paul says, I don't know. Just a 50-player free-for-all? I don't I don't know. I think the I think the reason the game is is good is because of what it is. I think if you if you expand that and make it like 10 teams of three or a uh, hundred teams of three, does that, does that still keep what the finals is? I mean, sure it's teams of three, but the game mode is what makes it fun, right? Game is good because of old battlefield devs. I, I, I'm interested in, it. I played it. I enjoyed it, but just not, I just don't like playing the PVP anymore. I'm just not there anymore. I don't. I enjoy the game. I like the fully destructible environment. I like the game show type of feel. I just. I just don't want to put the time into it. By the way, this is what the Azacross video is about. For it's it's for finals. 
or is it for bu the bungee thing? Bungie's doing a live stream today at 1 p.m. I guess we'll talk about it tomorrow then. All right, we talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. All right, I got two two stories. Let me see what this one is. I don't know if I want to talk about this one. This is about the this is about the SAG AFTRA thing. I don't think I'm going to talk about it. It's the AI debate and stuff like that. It's a long article. I'm going to have to do that later. I think I'm going to read up on that more before I talk about that. I'll have to change, I'll have to, I'll have to change the... Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Okay, I might as well do that now. Let me change the... Talk more about the Harry Potter Hogwarts than we did that. Let me change that real fast. Sorry, fixing things in real time. <clears throat> What's going on with Skydance? Uh, you'll, you'll see in a second. Sorry. All right. So Skydance. Skydance Media, Captain America, and Black Panther game is titled Marvel Rise, or Mar titled Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. Okay. I don't know, just based off of that title, I don't know if I like the title, right? Change the idea online shooter with the always co-op friendly fire. Galactic war campaign. That's constantly changing. V Rising was announced in full release. It's coming out with controller support. So good. I never played V Rising. I have it. Never played it. <clears throat> All right. So Skydance New Media's Captain America and Black Panther game is titled Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. It's rumored, right? We don't know if that's the actual working title or, or not. Uncharted creator Amy Henning Studio officially announced the AAA action adventure Marvel title in 2022. Okay. Been close to a couple of years since the Skydance New Media led the Uncharted creator Amy Henning announced it was working on a AAA narrative driven action adventure Marvel game that could also be Captain America and Black Panther teaming up together. Details on this game have been a scant since uh, it was exist to the extent that it doesn't know uh, what it's going to be called. Now, however, a known leaker may have shed some light on the particular over the tw over Twitter. Okay. Caracas, or, yeah, Caracas, has accurately leaked the name of existing Sonic X Shadow Generations before and officially announced a claim that the Skydance New Media Marvel game will be titled Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. This seems like a weird name. I mean, you call your game what you want, just Marvel 1943. I don't know. What do you guys think? Good? Bad? I don't know. Uh, previously, it was officially confirmed that the game was also be set during World War II. Captain America and T'Challa's grandfather, uh, the Black Panther of that time, will start as a protagonist. But they're also joined by two additional non-superpower playable characters, Colin Commander member Gabriel Jones and Wakanda spy network leader uh, Nanali. Okay, Skydance New Media has said that the game is going to be deeply cinematic experience similar to Aiming Henning's past work. Meanwhile, though, there'll also be multiple characters, uh, playable characters, teaming up together. Co-op won't be a featured. Won't be featured. So no co-op. So just a single-player campaign that you're playing with four characters, right? You'll be swapping back and forth, but no, no co-op. That's kind of sad. Okay. 
here, here's, here's two things, right? I'm excited. I'm excited for another Marvel game. But at the same time, everything that's going on right now in the industry, okay? I'm not that excited for a Marvel game, okay? Because I just want to make sure that the characters stay the characters and there's not an agenda pushed behind it. You know what I mean? So, obviously, I'm excited for the Marvel game. I'm excited for other brands coming down the line. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the Transformers game, right? I'm excited for the Star Wars Outlaws game. I'm, a, I'm a, excited for the Iron Man game that EA is working on. But at the same time, I've, I've seen the list of where these companies work for and who they work with. And now they're going about not saying who they're working with anymore. They, they, they're taking it down. They're, you have to look at the credits, right? So other people will have to do that. But just if you tell me that it's a Captain America Black Panther game, I'm excited. I'm excited. But now it's a Marvel game with Captain America and Black Panther. And we saw what happened to, to Suicide Squad, right? We, what other games, that what's happened to it. So I don't know. I'm excited on one hand, but I'm not excited on the other. And uh, I think the title is kind of weird. It, it, it's, it could, maybe it could grow on me, but the Marvel 1943, I just think that's a weird start. Marvel 1943, Rise of Hydra. Like, I feel like, like are there other games coming out that are going to be like Marvel 1962, Fantastic Four? You know what I mean? Like, is that what's going to happen? Like, like, stuff like that? I don't know. It just it feels, feels kind of weird. Matthew says it's a mouthful. Rather, I just rather be Marvel Rise of Hydra. Right. Rise of Hydra, 1943 or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Just a, again, I'm not shitting on the game because it's a bad title. Just kind of looking at the title going, I don't know if I really like the title. But then again, it's a leak, right? So we don't know. I'm not going to put too much stock in that until they actually officially say it. Right? But are you guys excited? Are you guys excited for Captain America? Are you excited for Black Panther? Are you excited for a four-player game that you could control four players? But at the same time, there's no co-op involved in it. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Krebsy Gaming says, uh, Hydra is like Nazis and they're promoting Nazis. Canceled. Red Skull should have been a, should be a woman. Future articles. I think you've just predicted the future. 100%. <laughs> uh, I, I laugh, but I think, I think you've nailed it right on the head, Krebsy. I think we're going to see those articles. Well, the character's outline shows uh, your agenda right there. Well, I guess, sure. The four characters that are there, three to one, three to one ratio. I guess. I mean, I really don't care about that stuff. If that if that's the agenda, then I'm fine with that. I was talking about more of a different type of agenda. I think that's uh, just my opinion. SBI will be involved in the game's development. I don't know. I don't know, Chris. Like I said, I don't know if they are part of Skydance and the Skydance is part of something else. Um, on their site, it shows what companies they're 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 for, and I don't believe that Skydance is one of them. But then again, there's more than just SBI, right? So, Jones says title's all right, not good, not bad to me. Yeah, it's just again, I don't think it's terrible. I just feel it's it's just kind of weird. I feel like it's like a series. You know what I mean, Jones? Like, I feel like if Marvel, 1943, and they're going to have a whole bunch of games in the 1943 era, and then if they pick a different one, you, you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> Show me if uh, Amy has a uh, bent the knee or not as a good writing. That's true. Amy Henning is a good writer. I love the Uncharted series. I am. Show gameplay, I don't care. Seems like Guardians of the Galaxy-like. Yeah, it could be like Guardians of the Galaxy. They can't even make a great creativity and what they uh, want to come up with with a creative title. Argus says, it's 1943. How are, how are you going to naturally be able to make uh, for modern audiences? You're going to just make the game in 2024 and make no prejudice or racism whatsoever. I feel like that too. Well, that's another, that's another thing, right? In 1943, it was a completely different time. Now, if they make 1943 into modern day, then that would be the agenda, wouldn't it? Right? That would be the agenda then. Right? Because if if they change things, because if you're doing a period piece, now again, it's a comic book, right? It's a comic book. But if you're if you're basing it in some reality of 1943, then it would have to have certain things and people would act certain ways, right? So 
if they're making 1943 for modern audiences, then you might have a point. Show me combat visuals, and then we'll talk. So it looks like the two of them are just generic. So why have four players in co-op? Well, I don't know if they're generic, right? I would assume that this person knows Captain America, right? It's one of, one of, and then this is... So, like, this would be Cap's, like, right-hand man or buddy or something. And then this person, you know, uh, T'Challa, this would be his right-hand man type of thing. Alien says, uh, Amy Henning's behind this. I have faith. And with the previous he said, I think Cap plays as uh, fantastically as he did in Marvel's Avengers. There's a good chance uh, it'll get this game. I really liked the way he played in Marvel's Avengers. He felt so good. Like, I loved... I hated that we had to go through the whole campaign to get him. But once we got him, that shield bashing and stuff felt so good during Marvel's Avengers. That's one thing Marvel's Avengers did good. I really like that. Doesn't look like Bucky though. That doesn't look like Bucky from from the light. It's really hard to tell, Alien. But this looks like a black gentleman. Obviously, this is a a black woman, and then obviously T'Challa is black. But this doesn't look like a white guy. <clears throat> and if it is, and if it is Bucky, <laughs> and it's a black gentleman, well, that's a problem right there. But I don't believe that it is. It's a, it's what was the guy's name? It says it here in the in the thing. Uh, Gabriel Jones. Gabriel Jones is the Commandos member. Yeah, so this is Gabriel Jones. Because th that would that would be an issue if Bucky all of a sudden. Have you heard more about it? Because uh, Wakanda didn't uh, want people to know that they were there. So as long as they did Black Panther team up, Captain, uh, when they wanted it, keep the society from public knowledge. Right. I think I think you just came across something, Matt. Right? Like, obviously in the war, maybe the the ruler of Germany at the time, maybe he finds Wakanda and they have to like fight off him from invading Wakanda to get the technology, right? That could be interesting. That could be interesting. That'd be interesting. As a soldier from the first Avengers film, Captain America with Nick Fury, and then the Holland Commandos. Argus says that would be 100% be different if how the minorities of women are treated in 1943, even if it was not being uh, directly racist or misogynistic. I'm curious on how the uh, SBI game like that and not that uh, not be not be bad. Paul says it's also called White Wolf, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the red is not it's not T'Challa. No, it's his, it's his grandfather. Yeah, it's his grandfather. It's not even his father. I said T'Challa, but it's it's not T'Challa. I, I said it in the in the article. It's um It just says it's T'Challa's grandfather, Azuri. Yeah. Nope, it's his grandfather. So it's not his dad, it's his grandfather. <clears throat> Well, in the real world, World War II history, the Third Reich did make it to Africa. Africa Corps uh, composed of the Third Reich Tank Division. So it, it could be interesting. That'd be interesting if they actually did something along that, where all of a sudden, while they were doing the war, all of a sudden, he found some other, and he's like, oh, we, we heard about this place, Wakanda, and they're like, you have to help us, right? If he gets there, it could be devastating, right? And that's when Captain America teams up with him. See, I, I like, look, I like the stories potentially, right? I'm, I'm psyching myself up for what it, what it could be. But again, we've all seen what could be. I think it's cool. Paris is a nice setting. There was another game that they just came out with. Remember the, um, what the hell was that game called? God, it, they just re-released it. The Saboteur. The Saboteur. I like that game. That was a fun game. Not great. Not great. But it was fun. Better not be in Africa. That's racist. Ask Resident Evil. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's 1943. 
So. Justice Society uh, stories takes place in the 40s. We're always cool. Yeah, I just think it... Here's, here's what I like about that time period, right? We can all agree... Just like a couple of years ago, we could all agree that being stuck in our houses, it fucking sucked. We all had one common enemy, right? Which was a virus. Back in those days, we all had a common enemy, which was Nazi Germany. Do you know what I mean? So no one can complain because it's history that, oh, well, you're going to offend somebody. Like, we all know that that's a bad, that was a bad time. I think there will always be, no matter what they do, Matthew, like, no matter what Marvel game, book, movie, anything, there will always be something that, like you're saying, like, I would, I want to see this. Like, when we watched, when we watched uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, right, and they went to, where they went to go see uh, certain people, in a, I forget the city's name now in my head, my, my, my brain, this is what COVID did to me. Right? I lose things all the time. Um, Utapau. Okay, right? That, that's Utapau. No, no, it's not Utapau. No. The hell's the city's name where Wolverine goes in the bar? Chad, help me out here. You know what I'm talking about, though. Anyway, you want to see Wolverine. You wanted to see Wolverine. My, my, my point is that you want to see certain characters. Like, they give you this, and you're like, oh, man, it would be really cool. For instance, Deadpool's coming out, right? Deadpool and Wolverine are in the movie together. You're like, oh, man, it'd be really cool if we saw Cyclops or if it would be really cool if a storm came in, right? Maripur, thank you. Majapur. Right? Like, no matter what comes out, no matter what game comes out, Marvel's Avengers came out. We're like, oh, man, it would be really cool if we got, you know, Doctor Strange, right? There'll always be that thing. I used to buy comic books. Back in 20, 2004 and 2009, stop in 2020 through the budget cost and the COVID pandemic. Sorry, right, Alien. We, we, we bounced off each other. Appreciate it. I think you will always, I think you will always get that. I'm not saying Cap isn't, just like how uh, Bucky as a great character also could uh, still be with Cap and Cap's main focus, but it also leaves opportunity to bring Bucky in. No, no, I, I get what you're saying. I'm saying no matter what they come out with, there's always going to be somebody that's like, oh man, it would have been really cool if they brought this person in, or they connected there, or you get to see it, or just a little Easter egg, right? Like, I think it would have been cool, minus the she-hulk show like it would have been cool to see she-hulk in the game of marvel's avengers it would have been cool if dr strange and scarlet witch came into uh into the thing i always think they could connect certain things i also think they could do like i think this would be a good period a uh, good period piece to make a tv show with right like if marvel wanted to do a show period during this time frame i think that would be cool as well they sort of did it with with carter captain carter and stuff but but that's that's that that time. Wait, what's the word I'm looking for? That time er, that area of time is just such so cool because we all hate the villain, right? We all are entertained by it, and yet we all want to know like a little bit of a history and stuff that's going on. Because whatever Cap does here, he also you know it connects to the future, which is pretty cool, right? To think that Captain America was back in World War II, you know, going against the bad guys. And then he's also helping us out in the future. I don't know. It's always been cool. Time period's nice, but the show, I know how they uh, they would go with it. Current Marvel with Falcon and Winter Soldier went down. Yeah, no. 
I'm trying to put myself in a position uh, in my brain set, Salty, where it's Marvel before what they turn Marvel into after Endgame, right? Like, it, come on, let's be honest. If if we were pitching all shows back in like uh, the late 2000, like 2015, 2016, we'd be pumped as fuck right now for the shows. But now, right now, you're like, nah, I don't, I don't care. Like, they don't even know what they're doing right now. Right? You don't even know what they're doing. With the Marvel doesn't know what they're doing. I, I love the people that told me Shang-Chi was like this greatest, the greatest superhero ever to be existed. Right? Saved lives. Okay? Uh, the, the, I don't even know what they're called. The Eternals. Okay? The Eternals. Awesome movie. I remember people arguing with me that those are great films. If they're so great, where are they? Where's the sequels? Where are they? Right? Where are they? Where is Shang-Chi? Okay? Where where is he? Where's the Eternals? I'll tell you where they are. They're on the cutting room floor because they were shit movies. <laughs> in the time frame that we've had, we've had we've had trilogies happen in the Marvel universe. Right? I think there was three Thor movies by the time, right? That was going on. Didn't Shang-Chi come out in 2020? 2020? 2021. We're three years in. We haven't seen a sequel. We haven't heard anything. Nothing. Shang-Chi just announced a new movie, actually. Where? There's articles talking about Shang-Chi potential release date. Has been officially announced. The MCU Phase 4. Release date for Shang-Chi Pictures. The sequel of Shang-Chi Pictures, uh, Legend of Ten Rings, is officially announced. A Phase 4 film has confirmed itself as an essential part of the Marvel's future with solid reviews from critics. <clears throat> okay. So, okay. So, planned debut 2026, one before the Avengers of the Kang Dynasty in February 2016 and later to July of November 2026, respectively. So, 2026. So, five years. Five years in between the movies. Okay, so let me let me look up something real fast. <clears throat> All right. No, I need I need the dates. Oh. Okay, you had in five years. In five years. Okay, just over. Yeah, just five years. You had Iron Man one in two thousand eight, Iron Man two in two thousand ten, and Iron Man three in twenty thirteen. Right. <laughs> You had a trilogy. You had a trilogy done in five years. And yet, Shang-Chi, 2021 and now 2026. Greatest superhero ever. You had Thor, 2011. Thor 2 in 2013. Okay. And then you had the, the other... I can't see all the where where is all of this? You see what Yeah. Right, so you had Captain America 
Or you had Thor 2011, Captain America 2011. Then you had Thor Dark World 2013, Captain America 2014. Okay, third one, 2017. So the first one, 2011. So you almost had three films within within five years of Thor. But they also had three Avenger films done. <laughs> this this whole phase is garbage. Paul, I like the first two acts. The first two acts of Shang-Chi I thought were great. The third one was the throwaway. And I've said in my review, I don't even know if it's up on Nerding with 30. Um, I said that the movie should have been off the father and not Shang-Chi himself. I think it would have been cool <clears throat> if they did a movie with the father first and then lead into, okay. But they kind of just like threw him in there. And it was just, it was just a, it was just a weird, weird timing and, and whatnot. And the Eternals is canceled. They're done with that. Disney Marvel butchered it. Jack Kirby, The Eternals. Fun fact, Jack Kirby didn't didn't intend for The Eternals to be part of the Marvel Cinem uh, Comics uh, universe. They were meant to be separate. I'm, I'm excited to watch Deadpool 3. There's a bunch of rumors going on and stuff like that, but that's not why I'm excited. I'm just excited to kind of like, I like the first one, I like the second one. I, I don't want it to be connected to anything. I just want it to be a, a standalone, but I think it I think this is the this is the savior, right? Deadpool is gonna be the savior of what the other ones weren't. To kind of bring everything back around. Well, CGI is not bad. Krebsy, just bad CGI is bad. Same like live service is not bad, but bad live service is. CGI is is good if you if you don't see it, right? If it just kind of blends in, but bad CGI is bad. I'm considered watching uh, Marvel Jesus Deadpool at the cinema. I haven't been uh, to the cinema since the Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, you gotta cleanse your palate, salty. The last movie you saw in theaters was The Last Jedi? Oh, for God's sakes. Watch anything else. Like, just go watch Garfield or something in the theater. You gotta get... You gotta... You can't have the last memory in the theaters The Last Jedi. What's wrong with you? Go, go watch anything. Anything. <laughs> Eclipse, you you know that the Top Gun, the movie, those jets are completely fake, right? Those those jets didn't even exist. When CGI is done correctly. You can't tell. There's a lot of movies, though, you can't tell. Even movies that tell you, like, oh, we use no CGI. All movies use CGI. They're, when they say they're not using CGI, they mean they're not using CGI for the main, um, for the main stuff like um, Ford versus Ferrari, right? For instance, there's a lot of there's 
all CGI in that movie. But Matt Damon came out and said they didn't use CGI. What he's talking about is like the actual like filming they did for the main characters is not CGI. When when you see them on camera and they're driving through and doing fast things, like that's them actually driving. But the wide shots and everything else, that's all CGI. That's the last that's the last one I saw. Multiverse of Madness is the last movie I saw in theaters for Marvel. Wait, Tom Cruise didn't actually fly those planes? No, no. When you see no, see that that's the difference. When Tom Cruise is in the in the shot in the cockpit, he's actually flying those planes. When you see the wide shots and stuff like that, um, certain vehicles, like the bad guy, uh, the bad guy of fighters, were all CGI. Like they're actually flying. So all the actors, when they get their faces and stuff like that, that's them in the actual plane and stuff. Oh, I'm about to start that. The Gentleman series? I'm about to start that. I know it's blasphemy, but I personally just think without Ryan Reynolds, I wouldn't even watch Deadpool. i watch it for Ryan. Yeah, well, that, that's fine. They know that. Tazma says, I can't remember the last time I went to the movies. 40 bucks for two people. I look at it as uh, someone commented the other day on my on one of my videos, and they said that with four people, you know, paying $100 to go to the theater, I said, yeah, but you, you probably also don't go out to eat a lot, right? You you don't go to, to dinner, or you don't go to a concert, or you don't go to a sporting event, right? When you go to the theater, I'm not, I'm not asking people to go to the theater like once a week, once a month, right? You know what I mean? Like, it's a treat. Like, you go out and you're like, hey, hey kids, come on, we're we're going to a circus or we're going to the, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not about going to the theater, right? Because think about this. And I said this in the thing, I go, where do you think that? Cause five ninety nine to rent the movie or seven bucks or 10 bucks, whatever it is for your whole family to watch it at home. Sure. That's saves you a bunch of money. Okay. But at the same time, if no one went to the theater, if nobody went to the theater, then there wouldn't be movies made. Right. The, the cost has got to go somewhere. So let's say the movies, movie theater shuts down. There's no more movies anymore, right? And now everyone's watching movies at home. Do you think those movies are going to be really good? Where are they getting the money from? Do you think at your five ninety nine, dollars you know how many more people have to go watch that movie now to get the budget that they have to make to get those things? The, 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 the cost has to come majorly down, right? The, the whole industry goes, goes awry if nobody, right? Yeah, movies are made for Netflix, and Netflix keeps raising the thing, and they have two hundred million dollars, and they also have advertisements coming in. So where do you where do you think that money's coming from? Right? They're not lowering the price of the of the way movies are made. They have to, but instead of you know they're spending two hundred million dollars, right? Disney Plus is spending eight million dollars an episode, right? Don't care how much it costs. I love going to see movies in the specifically specifically in theaters. Watching at home isn't even close to the same. And I can't hold my attention to the same. I'm I'm the exact same way, Argus. I gotta go to the theater to watch something. We we literally watched the other day, we watched the movie, and it was just yep, 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 yep. Why is it it's like shh like like when you go when you go most people when they go to a when they go to a theater, there's like a unsigned contract. It's like, all right, everyone's here, right? We're all gonna stay quiet, watch. Sure, there's sounds of people eating their chips or and whatnot. Adapt or die? Well, that's fine, Krebsy. As a business, adapt or die. But if if they adapt and they just make all movies for, for Netflix, those are not going to be all great movies. There's going to be less movies made. Less movies made. Longer periods of time of them coming out in between. 
Movies made a lot of money because they went to theaters. Then they sold DVDs. Then they also, you rented them. Now it's, no one goes to the theaters. You, you pay a subscription fee on, on the actual site. <clears throat> yeah, Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal is uh is on. I haven't watched it yet. I've seen TikTok saying boomers said I can't talk at the movies. Fuck, then I'll talk whenever I want. I don't understand. I don't know what that means. Like, boomers say you can't talk at the movies, and the person that's saying, I'll talk wherever I want. <clears throat> I know, we read it the other day. Two out of three people are, are, are rather watch it at home. Well, the industry will die then. And then, and then the fire that's outside your house, that's not affecting your house at that moment. Sure, the two out of three people, that it, it could be three out of three people watching at home. And then the industry will die because there will not be making enough money. And then the, the money that you're paying now for the $5.99 to rent a movie will now be $15 to rent a movie. And, and then the actual streaming service will be $40, right? Because they can't make enough money. a Gen X kid or a Gen Z kids then you can talk through an entire movie at the theater I would literally get kicked out because I would punch them in the face <laughs> just so they can learn a lesson oh you know actually you know what I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't punch them I would trip in the dark theater with my elbow just just trying to get by oh sorry sorry <clears throat> no, I want theaters to exist. I prefer them. I understand, Krebsy, but I'm just letting you know that if you do what what you suggested, that's what's going to happen to the movie industry. It's not about adapting. It's literally about the, 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 where's the money coming from? Right now, when you go to a theater, you're paying per person. At home, you're paying for a group. You could have 20 people come over for $5.99. and rent. Now, I, I get this. Back in the day, you're like, well, how did it work with Blockbuster? People went to the theater. That's how. Right? People went to the theater still. When you take away the theater, everything else has to rise up. Right? You can make more money and work a grocery store and make 25 bucks an hour. What do you think is going to happen to the milk? Right? It's going to go up in price as well. There, there's got to be there's got to be substantial areas to go. You have to have theaters. You have to have a, a chain of 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 when they rent and when it comes out. But they're getting rid of all that. It's all coming straight. There was a time where if you wanted to watch a movie that was in theaters at your house, it would cost you thousands of dollars, thousands. There would be a special company that would come in and give you a a, a projector or a television with a, and you would have to rent it for thousands of dollars. The younger generation couldn't care less. They just want convenience. Sure, but you all have to pay. You all have to pay for that convenience. <clears throat> well, what theaters are doing now? Well, the problem is what theaters are doing now is they're they're trying to subsidize for so like less people going to the theaters, so they have to raise the price because they still have to pay for the the film. If the film cost them uh, small terms a thousand dollars to to rent it for that one afternoon for that one show and then 200 people are supposed to go into that theater and all pay a certain price to make that thousand dollars to make money off of it but they only get five people to show up well what happens they can't afford it they're like well we can't afford that right
I can't afford to go to the movies. I had to buy four video games in one week. Come on, Mike. <laughs> and obviously, I get it, right? I, I get it. Like, there's there's single people, there's couples, there's there's families, right? And family members, uh, families that one household one household income can't take their kids to the movies, you know, every week. We have a sub service as well, Paul. We have uh, AMC pays. I forget what it is. I forget what the 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 price is. Right? Let me see. AMC. Stubs a list or something like that. Uh, perks and possibilities for everyone. Let me see what the what the price is. Uh... Look at this. Like, th think about what they're doing. If you can't afford this, right? If you can't afford this, enjoy a month of big screen movies for just 99 cents. <laughs> right? See up to three movies every week, including, right? Get your first month of A-list for just 99 cents. See up for three movies every week in any format, including Adobe, Dig uh, Adobe Cinema, IMAX, and Prime. Okay. They 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 tell me the price after. Right, so you're you're telling me right now. <laughs> Stubbs premiere. It pays plus up your movies perks. Okay. You got perks, but what's the compare tiers? 100 points spend. sign up now for free. Join for $15 uh, a month. I would say for a year. Is that what it is? Right. And people are like, oh, I can't afford the movies. Okay, I can't afford the movies, right? But then people will say, well, I can't afford the movies. And then you can afford a movie, right? For 20 bucks, you can go to the movies three times a week, right? 20 bucks a month, movies three times a week. But then they're like, well, I can't afford the concession stands. I feel like actors get paid too much. For a lot of these films. So you're okay with sports athletes making as much money as they get? You're, you're okay spending $2,000 for, for a sports ticket for, for three hours? Yeah, but the theaters the theaters were alive and well before the Marvel, Marvel movies came in. I would say the Marvel movies hurt the industry more than helped the industry. Because now, if a movie doesn't hold your attention with lots of explosions, people are like, now nah, I'm out. Are the teams losing money? Uh, some of them are. Cheapest Super Bowl ticket was 8K. Most expensive was 2.5 mil. Right. That's fine. Don't athletes make most of their money from sponsors? No, they get paid the, the salary cap. That's that's completely different. That you can say the same thing. Don't athlete don't don't actors make most of their money from from endorsements? What are, what are we talking about, House? Your example from one to the other. Advertisement's advertisement. 
if I, if I if a speaking role at, at, a, at a school or if I take a, a commercial or eat a chip or tweet something, that's completely different than the actual job that they're doing. <clears throat> Right. For every every like superstar, I don't even know what LeBron James makes for like 20 million a year. There's also the guy in the NBA or whatever gets like the minimum salary of like 180K or whatever it is. One point one million U.S. dollars is the uh, minimum salary for NBA. One point one million. He can almost he can almost get one ticket at the uh, at the Super Bowl. <laughs> he can get a half a ticket at the Super Bowl with the with the minimum salary that he makes. I mean, if the money is there, it's there. Maybe the production companies. Yeah, but the, the, the fact is that a lot of these people, they're raising money. Like, so here, here's the thing, House. Before the movie is out and made, they're making, their, they're making money from investors that have money. Most people lose money in movie investments, okay? Like the money that, are, that they're paying for the producer, the director, the whole production, that's raised outside before it comes to the theaters. Once they make that movie, then they put it in there, and then, then we get our money, right? But they're using someone else's money before they make that film, television show, or whatever. If that's putting endorsements, and they have a bag of chips in the background, or drinking a Coke on the thing, and they're getting money from that to make it as well, whatever. Give me give me 1.1 million, I'll watch the shitty movie you want. <laughs> Like I'm the I'm the one that used to work on the actual movie, right? So the actor comes on set for they might be for for three days and do all their s scenes. They might be there for a week. Meanwhile, I'm there every single day, 14, 16, 20 hour days, and I'm not making millions. I'm not even I'm not even making thousands, right? When I was in the union back, when I was a camera operator, I was making 450 a day, 450 a day. After 14, it would go up. Right? It all depends on the job. Right? Sometimes you make 250 a day. When I did NFL stuff, easy. They would pay for my they would pay for my travel, they would pay for my food, they would pay for my whatever. They would pay all my expenses and I would get my, my pay. So for a three hour job, okay, I would make about four fifty five hundred dollars for three hours. Then there's the jobs I worked that you're an extra or you're you're a PA, 100 bucks, flat rate, 100 bucks a day for however many hours. Sarge says, how do you guys not see this? Going to the movies with four people, eighty dollars with concessions, multiple four times a month. If they're if they're moviegoers, three hundred twenty dollars a month. They're losing millions a month. <clears throat> right. That's why it's so important for movies for that opening weekend. That opening weekend is huge, right? And you're only trying to get a small percentage of people to come see your film. 
video games is not the same. Video games is not the same because video games you can you can watch or play day one, week one, month one, year one. It's there. Movies, they recoup all their majority of their costs up front, right? That first weekend, the first two weekends or first two weeks are very important for movies. If they don't do good the first week, they're done. Done. Unless it's got legs and people want to watch it like Titanic just kept going and going. Avatar just kept going and going. Okay. But it, a movie theater now has an opening of maybe, what, four weeks? That movie runs in that theater, maybe six weeks. And the first two weeks are extremely important for a movie. If they don't make their movie, if they don't make over 50% of their movie, like their budget from that first weekend, they're done. You see the numbers of the social magical? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they made a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. It was... It, th this movie's done. This this movie's done. Let me see what they... Um... Yeah, this movie this movie came out this week okay the american society of magical okay made 1.3 million okay done done they won't even tell you what the budget is it doesn't matter what the budget was it was it was definitely more than a million dollars even if it cost 3 million right that this this movie probably cost them anywhere between twenty and fifty million dollars to make. I don't, bro. I just wanted. I don't want pro. I just wanted to see. The details. Uh, there's pro again. I don't want pro. I just want. God's sakes. I, I just wanted to show you the 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 cast. So you got you got Justin Smith. Which is the the kid that I believe he played? What else did he play in? Get down. He was in Pokemon the Detective. He was in Dungeons and Dragons. He was the uh, alchemist, I think. Okay, Jurassic Park. He was in. You got David Allen Greer. No major blockbuster type people. Let me see if I can find their budget. Yeah, they don't they don't tell you the budget. They probably lost their ass on it. PlayStation first party games are considered movies. <laughs> Sard says you're staying home for 20 bucks a month for a family of four is amazing, but it destroys the original movie economy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the problem is for the movie theater to, to survive, they can't come out faster into streaming services. They have to stay in theaters. And if they don't stay in theaters, then you have to put it out again. When we were younger, a movie would come out and then you would not see that on TV for a year. For a year. It would be in the theaters for half a year. Then it would come out uh, where you could rent it. And then it wouldn't come to like HBO or come to something else for a year afterwards. Minimum. Hmm. <clears throat> 
their budget was one Super Bowl ticket. <laughs> I mean, I had an entire movie about black people, but someone somehow they are racist. No, there's there's white people in the movie, but it's about it is about it is about racism. Yeah. It's it's supposed to be a satire, but it apparently doesn't come across that way. <clears throat> they thought streaming would save them and make it easier. No. Yeah, because they thought that oh everyone the the way it would work is that you're you're losing you're only making one fourth of the movie ticket. One fourth of the movie ticket. That's if you have a, a household of four people. That's fine if you're renting a movie after it's made it's a bunch of money. But if you're not making that upfront money and you're just you're, it's one fourth the money. So if you made twenty dollars, if it, if it, if tickets were five dollars, you're only making five dollars now. You're not making twenty dollars. They're in, they're in trouble. They're in, they're in massively trouble. They have to figure out something for for theaters. Yeah, they they got to figure out something to make the movie industry change. And it's not releasing stuff faster. That's not the answer. Look how people, look how many people, I'm waiting, I, I'm not going to buy a PlayStation because I know they're coming to PC, I already own a PC, okay? I can wait it out. Movies, I'm like, if it's a good movie to see in theaters, I'll see it. If it's another movie, I'm like, eh, I'm not interested. Like, every movie that comes out, I'm not interested in. Doesn't mean I make, you know, I go see that movie. But if it's a big blockbuster that comes out, if it's like a Top Gun, if it's like a, I don't know, I don't even watch Fast and Furious. But if another movie comes out that I'm interested in, I'm going to go see it in theaters. You either have to raise the price at home for convenience or you go to the theater. That's the difference. You would have to raise the price so instead of renting it for three ninety nine, it would be renting it for thirty bucks. It's time for Microsoft to create a movie pass. No, I'm being serious though. For 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 the industry to work the way it is, you have to charge the amount. So if Dune Part Three comes to theaters and you want to watch it at home at the same time you got to pay the same price they're paying at the movies for convenience you're paying for convenience or you pay for the theater I'm gonna say my idea uh, would work. Nobody will turn down the redhead. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Travis. Now, would I want to pay forty dollars, thirty, forty dollars to watch a movie in my house? No, no, I wouldn't. They tried it, Alien. They tried it with what twenty? Was it twenty bucks or something like that? But the problem with the with Black Widow movie was that nobody gave a shit. It was a terrible movie. And and the, and the difference is when someone can watch it at house for 20 bucks, the word gets around much faster. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't release it in theaters and that at the same time. It's it's one or the other. I like the theater, but I would rather stay at home. I'm not crowded house. Uh, watching my 86 inch LG TV with great sound system instead of having people and their phones out talking. 
I, I think if you're by yourself at home, cool. I know my son talks the entire time. What did Widow charge for that? What did Black Widow charge for that? Twenty bucks. Yeah, right. It was. It was like twenty. And people were like, "Nah, I'm not paying that." <laughs> They're like, "I'll just wait for it to come on the regular, right? Like, don't pay for it." And they'll just wait for it to come on the streaming service, which is already on the streaming service. You're paying it and then just wait. What was it? Which is the way? Three months? Three months to not pay the 20 bucks? Streaming, streaming services have literally killed the industry. Twenty bucks worth for Black Widows, twenty bucks more. Yeah. It was it was a terrible movie. Talk about great CGI. Phenomenal. Yeah, it was it was terrible. Air fights that look look uh shit. It's software. These are great things. We wait you in Black Widow. Yeah, it was terrible. It was a terrible movie. <laughs> farting during a movie at that theater is a no-no yeah but you have so many people you can blame it on are they uh are they not putting it on to you have to pay for it on, on playstation travis i love his russian accent he nailed it oh it's so bad <laughs> It's so bad. The whole movie is just bad. It's like a fan film. A fan film of Black Widow. I think it's worth 40 bucks for sure. Around here, we can drink beer in the theaters. You can drink beer in the theaters here. It all depends on where, what theater you go to, though. I got drunk during Black Panther. I don't remember. <laughs> all right. It's almost one o'clock. We'll be uh, playing tonight. I'm not sure if we're going to be playing Frontier. Uh, what's it called? Front? No, Lightyear Frontier. It's like a it's like a farm, relaxing, chilled mech type game. We might be playing that a little bit tonight, um, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, other than that, uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning. We also do a podcast on Thursday nights, GXG. Uh, there is no podcast on Friday this week. I'm uh, completely off. Um, and we might be doing the... Nerdy with 30 on Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening, uh, for some entertainment talks and whatnot. So, appreciate it very much. You guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you take off. And I'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.